Good evening, everyone. I want to welcome you to the December 2nd, 2014 uh, Municipal Budget Committee meeting. Everyone would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone. As you know, we are still in workshop, and this evening we will be dealing with the uh, police budget entirely for the evening. And before we get going, I would like to start out with everyone introducing themselves, and if we could start with Representative Dave Wood. Almost, tomorrow. <laughs> um, hi, Dave Wood. Representative elect Dave Wood. Okay. Thank you. Mike Pierce. Sonny Kravitz. Jim Mike. Waddell. Brian Lampo. Uh, Jerry's not here. John Rice, Eileen Latimer, Chairman. Mike Bluff. Stephen LaBranche. Jones. Dick Renier. Gwen Farrell. Bob Ladd. Jim O'Loughlin. Rich Sawyer, Chief of Police. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. <laughs> and if you would introduce. Someone new to our table, but not uh, new. With, with me tonight is Dave Hobbs, the uh, newly appointed Deputy Chief of Police. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. All right, as we've been doing, and this is a little bit different, Chief Sawyer, this year <coughs> we put out some questions. Maybe you prefer. Them. And what we've been doing is we've just been allowing the questions before the section then getting into the section, because many times the questions are duplicated. And this year we found that we didn't have a lot of duplicity as we went around in doing it in this format. We'll judge it after the fact to see if it worked for us or if it didn't. Um, but if I could have um, Paige, I'm a little under the weather tonight, so I'm going to try not to talk as much as I usually Paige, can you in, make a comment? Absolutely. You know, with the questions, it seems to the questions are there for efficiency, which is good. But in the last couple of meetings, it appears to me that we've ended up with a dialogue mm -hmm. between one member and the person presenting the budget. And it would appear to me that in every committee I've ever been on or in the House of Representatives or anything, that all questions go through the chair and follow-ups go through the chair. And I don't think that's been happening. And I, I think we really, for efficiency's sake, it would be much better if, if somebody has a follow-up question that they request from the chair first that they can follow up with that question rather than rather than end up in a dialogue between one member and and the <coughs> person presenting i agree yep. and okay. we've had a lot of cross conversations across the floor and if we could just keep to the order of going around the table the chair has very little voice tonight as you can probably hear and i'm going to try to talk less rather than more and so, just, one moment, like on what Mr. Waddell Mr. Pierce, said. Yeah, I, I'm speaking. I, oh, I was trying to well, you. I have, don't make me talk more than I need to, Michael, tonight, please. Um, I, th I think the intention is clear that we allow the time to answer the questions. The questions have been laid out. They've been sent out to you. They're in writing. Um, Jerry has done a, a great job of um, guiding the questions, and I have no problem with that, Jerry, if you don't mind. All right, but for the sake of expediting this a little bit, if we could keep it with brevity, because there is detail in here. And with that, um, Selectman Waddell, if you could give us the page number. Be if I may, before we get started. Yes. Um, this is what we need to do to get through the budget. We need to be able to interact a little bit at this stage. We always, there will be a go-around around the table when we're done. The only thing I'm, I'm saying, saying is not an interruption in between, Brian. The um, way we started, where we laid out the questions, we have the chief do his presentation, and then at the end we will give everyone a turn at the end. I would just hate to see, you know, maybe someone else has a different idea than I do. Well, may I And at this question? stage... This is where we can say, okay, well, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, do I understand that you're saying or suggesting that the previous meetings 
you found to be well managed and uh, we should proceed as we have in the past? I have no comment on that. Then my understanding is lost. Okay. You know, yeah. Madam Chairman, if I may, for instance, the first page on page 43 there, I only have a couple of questions. After that, I'm done with that page, if you will, and if somebody, you know, if you wish, you could have uh, this comment on well, that page. Well, again, again, yeah. we are going to go by section. Okay. All right? Uh, let me lay this out to you. So, you mean One okay, more time. By, by the sections here. Right. Yeah. The way the sections are laid out, we're going to go by section in its entirety. If there are questions attached to that section, then we will have the chief answer those for us leading into the discussion, and then we'll have him present that section. Before we move to the next one, I would appreciate it if you do not jump from section to section. As we complete one section, we will have questions around the table on that section. That being complete, we will then move on to the next section. Exactly. <coughs> Makes perfect sense. Okay. Yes, Mr. Jones. I believe um, page 66. One minute. When you say section, I assume you say wherever there's a reference to the word subtotal, that's going to be considered a section. No, we're going by the full total, right? We're going to take the, uh, we've been taking the subtotals. I know, I know you were. Forward. We've been doing each section. Okay, I have no problem with the total, but you're still going to have to go back to a section. So. Section I just thought we were going to change that at the end of the last meeting. <coughs> we were going to go to total. So the first subtotal is on page 47, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to move 47. Yes? Yes. So yes. I move 10,000. 10,000. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. 47. Where? <laughs> 40, page 47. Page 47. I'm sorry. It's 44. I moved the wrong page. <laughs> Under administration. Sorry, guys. 483. Yeah, Ram. Mr. Waddell is moving $483,730. For a whole second. Very good. Jim's got it now. Go ahead. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, Jim. We're ready to proceed, Madam Chair. Okay. Madam Chair, if I might just ask a question. I just want to make sure I'm following the procedure you want to follow. <laughs> so subtotal, you're right on with us. When you say section by section, my first section I have is administration right. and crime control investigation. Exactly. Right. So I can probably save you a lot of time with the very first question because it's going to probably knock a few of the questions off that seem to be a little repetitive. So if I could be allowed to just answer the questions as I have them and then go back to the questions, the follow-up, I'm probably going to answer a lot of the questions that would have been asked <coughs> and get them off the table for you, and we can get right down to the, the So you want to do all the sections all at once? One section. I'll do administration first. Let me read the question. That's I'll read the, the answer I formulated. Mm -hmm. And I think some of those answers are going to answer some of the questions further on down the page just to save you some time, right. if that works for you. Okay. One more comment. All right. Last one. Prior to this meeting, didn't we also always go to the last page of the total for that uh, department and make as a motion? As long as we get to there at the end, but since we put the question, So you don't think it's necessary for us to um, have a, a motion for the total police and then open it for discussion? Eventually you will. Right. Okay. So and I right. think what happened is as we were adjusting numbers, we were adjusting that and then we were going back oh, and amending the adjustment. Okay. So okay. if we take it section by section, we're amending each section as we go along. When we get to the end, if we need to adjust the total to accept it. Right. Okay? Yep. Am I correct in that? Quiet. Is there any Sounds procedural good. problem with that? <coughs> <laughs> ask. We, we did yeah. have a motion. Yeah, this in the past with the police budget. Yeah, I mean and, and and you're right, Rich. Traditionally, that's what we did. Yeah. We went to the end, but it gets foggy and cloudy well, yeah, we, we when when you go to that, the and then you make okay. an adjustment, and then it's wherever is the adjustment. So if we just take it one step at a time. We did have a motion and a second on page 47's subtotal. Thank you. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Chief Sawyer. Thank you very much, and again, thank you for letting us be here tonight. Um, <coughs> I do appreciate the questions. It did make uh, this being my first budget presentation as chief a lot easier. Um, so we'll start right with administration. The question was, uh, regular wages looks like a discretionary raise across the board for six people of 1.74% as opposed to CBA, period, true, question mark. Absolutely untrue. And this will answer a number of questions that go further. There are no discretionary raises contained within the Hampton Police Department budget. No discretionary raises are contained in this budget. 
So I hope that answers well, the number. Well, it's either discretionary or CBA, isn't it? What I said is there are no discretionary. Oh, they're it's all, all, they're all, all CBA. CBA. Okay. All collective bargaining agreement raises. There are no discretionary raises built in this budget. And that is an excellent answer. I can see this kind of big impact on the total either. <coughs> and then the next big question in our minds there. Tuition reimbursement. 25% increase, increased number of officers using this, specifics please. We do have a number of officers that are utilizing the tuition reimbursement, but more importantly, we have a number of officers that are going further in their careers as far as their education. Uh, we have one uh, officer that is actually seeking uh, his law degree, and we have a couple of officers, uh, and I believe uh, Deputy Chief Hobbs is one of them just completed his master's program. As you move up through those uh, graduate degrees, they become more expensive, just the way it is. They, they become more expensive, and the cost of education are going up every year. So I believe that $10,000 accurately reflects a fair amount of usage. Understand, we try not to exceed that line simply because it's a contractual issue or a policy issue. It comes a first come, first serve basis on those is things. Is this officers in the in the administration part of it or across the whole department? Across the entire department. Oh, this is the entire department here. Correct. Oh, I thought it was just the administration part of it. You and the deputy and your, you know, the people. You, you know, the uh, no, we contain that. We contain that portion in the administrative section, but that includes. Patrolman, that includes that's um, the whole, the whole business. communication specialists. I have one communication specialist that's uh, seeking her bachelor's degree. So that contains, for the entire department, I think $10,000 is a reasonable amount. That's the whole department. Yes. Now, is that part of the CBA? Or is town that, policy. That's part of town policy. Okay. So that's first come, first served. And any qualifiers? I believe it's a grade of a C or better but we're trying to get that, possibly change that policy to a B or better. Uh, but right now it's currently a C mm -hmm. in a related field to criminal justice. It doesn't have to be a criminal justice, but it's going to be a related field that you're pursuing the degree in. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's a comment. Why is computer development and repair considered part of overtime wages? That's because the person assigned gets paid uh, frequently at an overtime rate. This is not an outside vendor. This is somebody that works for the police department that deals with our computer internal, issues. Then. Huh? It's internal. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So that requires wages to include overtime, and that's what that line item reflects. I didn't see it. I gave it to you. Do you, you actually have a, a police officer or do repair? Or? We have a number of officers that are trained to handle different uh, levels of problems within the department. We use operating systems that need to be maintained. Uh, one of them is a lieutenant, and I believe we have two patrolmen that are also qualified to deal with some of those issues as they arise, because invariably they can happen on the midnight shift. You need to have somebody that can get the system back up and running. Uh, it's that, or we have to call somebody at home and Yeah, I was just curious because there's no money. I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about... What the heck is computer repair doing? You know, I didn't think that that was going When you look on. at the way it's wailed, I understand the confusion, but that <laughs> really reflects the person. Yeah. And that person is an internal employee of the Hampton okay. Police Department that internal. handles that. And I'm, I'm assuming that that is for security reasons. A number of those issues where we have access to federal and state computer systems, we have to, ins we have to ensure that if we want to stay connected through NCIC or the state computers, that our people uh, are sworn. <laughs> in certain aspects, in certain uh, parts of the uh, connections that we have are secured, and that can only really be done or overseen by somebody we feel mm -hmm. internally. If we didn't have someone internally who could do that, where would we then get someone there, to fix it? There are companies out there that we could, uh, we could look at. When we upgraded to a Windows-based system several years ago, we had to bring in an outside vendor to do that, and they are bonded. Mm -hmm. Bonded. We oversee them as far as the security parts, but they are bonded for that security uh, change. <coughs> so my next question would be, even at the overtime rate, are we saving money by doing this in-house, or would we be 
more beneficial from financial standpoint? I'd to... rather not get into that at the moment as the new chief that I'm right now currently making an assessment of all things within that department as to what is the proper direction for us to go in. So that is something I'm certainly considering, but I'm not prepared to make any moves at this point going to a private vendor as opposed to an internal. And even if we went to a private vendor, mm -hmm. there would have to be some internal uh, mm -hmm. controls and somebody up to speed on that even if we used an external vendor. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Uniform allowance. The average actual over the last four years is one point, uh, probably 1,814 a year, now 4,450. It's a suggestion on the surpluses, monies, all that. It's, um, it looks like the surge to me going on to make up perhaps from previous years that we didn't spend. No, it's not actually a make up, Jerry. It's a little bit different. It's uh, a number of things have occurred over the time period that we're talking about. That account is also used for things such as our badges and awards. We've had a number of things. Well, I guess we could call it catching up. There were a number of awards that we, we gave out, and we uh, have to be prepared to deal with when officers um, are deserving of those awards. And the other issue we're having is some of the badges that we bought back in 2008 mm -hmm. are in need of repair. Um, some of the times we'll find that because of the environment we work in and the seatbelts that some of the plating is coming off of the badges, and we have to send those back. We had one year where they were warrantied, and we did send a number of them back to get them all under the warranty, as many as we could. But that warranty expired <coughs> after one year, so now that's that's out of budget. We have to pay for those. Can we do anything this year in terms of taking a little bit out of the pot that we might have left over for this year and cover some of those? Uh, I have an asterisk there. That asterisk to me means possible use of surplus monies. That's, uh, you know, you can steer it, because this is December. Now's the time to buy some of the anomalies or the aberrations that occur, if you we've, will. We've bought a lot of the stuff we need to have in, in inventory, but as far as the badges go, those those are kind of on a, a, an as-needed basis. Uh, if one of the devices falls off the badge, it falls off, we have to send it out. Yeah. It's not something we're going to do with a soldering iron down in the maintenance no, room. No. Um, it's just something that we have to have done the right way. So I don't know if that's really an area that we could cut much. Well, I'm just saying that the last four years, including this year, your average is 1,800 bucks. Now you're asking for 44.50. That's a pretty steep crack. You know, there's 85 line items in this, in your budget, Chief, and mm -hmm. I, all we got to do is put 1,500 to 2,000 extra here and there, and pretty soon you got 100,000. Is where I'm coming from. I mean, there's 85 line items here, so any every line item that's a bump by a thousand or two or three or more is just at the end. You'll see how it can add up. That's my only suggestion. You, I, I think you could cut. 1500 to 2000 out of here and and still be be able to maintain your historical spending. Okay. Go ahead. Computer. Computer oh, supplies comp and expenses up 12.24%. What's new in here another example of using surplus monies. Uh, primary software support has increased. Um, and would reflect it in the end of the year. You may not be seeing that right now, but I believe that bill was just paid within the last several weeks. So you may not see that in the uh, to date expenditures that you've got in front of you. Uh, through October, it was 4357. I believe that was paid in November. <coughs> there has been a new September. Yeah. So I got October. It's 4356. So do we know what we spent in November, or, or? I'd have to go back and look at that exact expenditure, but I know the bill one. That one bill was sixteen thousand five hundred. Mm. That one bill was sixteen thousand five hundred. That's correct. In November. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's the annual maintenance fee for our primary vendor. <coughs> I want to just throw something in here, especially for our new members. As we get towards the end of the year, especially in the months of November and December, it is not unusual to see a bump because things have been held back on. They need to be paid. Renewals are done. So when you're going over this, it's not like all of a sudden we're spending money. It's more like we've held back for things that we should have paid or could have been paid a little earlier just in case we have any problems towards the end of the year, and that's what you're seeing, <coughs> plus things that come into renewal in these months. You know, it always looks like we spend a little bit more in November and December, but we'll keep going. Okay. 
vehicle maintenance. Now again, this is in the admin section. Uh, yep. Up 35.87% average over the last few, four, four years was 1,844, now we're asking for 5,000. Vehicles are getting older, and as they get older, it takes more maintenance. Now we replaced the 301 vehicle, which was the Chief's vehicle last year. Uh, so that's a new vehicle, but the Deputy Chief's vehicle is an older, I believe it's a 2007. Um, we believe you have a copy of our rolling stock. It is a 2007 Crown Vic with 80,000. Now the mileage is not a, a killer issue, it's an admin vehicle, but what we've found over the years, as you may recall, we've had two or three vehicles over the last few years go down that were in pretty good shape mechanically, but the frames start to rust and we start having body issues. We work in a salt air and a salt water environment and it just does a lot of wear and tear on the vehicles. So... Uh, history the last four years just doesn't I guess paint the picture because you're nowhere near it. As I say, your your spending, your historical spend rate was as I as I said at eighteen hundred bucks roughly, and now you're you're projecting five thousand. So I'm just saying the last four years, you're saying that they were newer vehicles and as they get older, the, yeah, our experience has been we've been at those times a few years back where we did out a uh, spreadsheet for the board of selectmen at the time. <clears throat> you know, we were spending more in maintaining the vehicles than we would have if we just bought a new vehicle. We, you know, you get to those critical points of you're spending more on repairs than you would have if you just got a new vehicle. Um, and we just don't want to get back to that pattern. Um, I'm not saying they're falling apart, but it's coming time. Yeah. Um, Do we have any new vehicles being requested in this budget or in any war and articles? In this budget, you'll see some in the patrol section. Yeah, you will. Okay. Yeah, the highest year I see is, not, uh, is, is, is the last few four years, 011, you spent $3,417. 011. Mm. I mean, I, I don't have a magic, I don't have a crystal ball. Well, I think so. you, you made the point, Jerry, though, but 011 was we had a Crown Vic that the Chief was driving, and that was starting to cost us some money. Yeah, go ahead. We bought a new vehicle. Yeah. And then... Uh, it's where that line is. You know, it, it, it's, it's one of those things where I got a vehicle that's an 07, that's got some wear and tear on it down in that environment. It's going to go on me eventually, and I'd rather get ahead of the curve than wait for it to have the, the frame rust out because we had a, a vehicle that sat in our backyard for almost a year with a rusted rusted frame that we just couldn't do anything with until we got it rid of it in the town auction. Well, did you take did you take stock of what you have? I'm talking about you and the deputy and yep. the prosecutor and, and have somebody give you an estimate of, uh, of, of perhaps some repairs that, uh, to the body that might be needed? We have our maintenance done uh, with... Public works now, yeah. and they look at those things about serviceability because that comes, you know, we have to have them inspected every year like everybody yeah. else's. Yeah. And they look at those things as to whether, you know, is this vehicle going to get us another year? Um, if we can get another year out of it, we've been doing that. It just, when it goes, it goes, and it's never going to be at the opportune time when the car goes down. Um, so we're just trying to stay ahead of that. How many vehicles are they? <coughs> in, in admin? No, yeah, in your. In admin, there's four vehicles. Four. And their ages again are? Um, we have the rolling stock list in your package. The uh, 301 vehicle is a 2013, 302 is an 07, and the 312, or is it 320 now, is another 07. You got one more? Yeah, the, the 30, hold on. Pardon me, just the three, the 301, the 302, and the 320. Three of them? Yeah. And the sevens are? A 13 and two 07s. Yeah. So the 07s yeah. are getting towards the end of their life cycle. Where do you? Well, I'm okay. I won't get into okay. detail. All right. Let's move on. Move on to new equipment. <coughs> yeah, we're not using three or four. That's not happening. Okay. New equipment, chief. New equipment. <laughs> Spent zero dollars over the last four years. Now we're asking for four thousand for workstations. Well. We didn't have a dire need for workstations over the last four years, so we thought it was prudent not to spend it. Um, we need the workstations throughout the building now. Okay, so what? What has changed? Yeah, what? Yeah, what has changed? And, and what Age, uh, technology. Um, you, know, you have a computer for three or four years; it, it becomes outdated. Um, so that's one of those things we again, we want to start replacing those and get stuff that's not going to fail on us. How many? Stations. Stations. 
three. Now, is this just for your, uh, your admin, you and the deputy? No, throughout the whole building. Throughout the whole building. So that includes, you know, down the admin wing, you have four sets there. You go into detectives, you have five sets there. You go into the patrol officer's room, there's three there. You go down into dispatch, there's two there. You go down into booking, there's what three kind of, there. I don't understand the workstations. Yeah, Maybe Tim, you can jump in on this. Yeah. Tim? No, it's, it, 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 it it's, 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 it's the computers that we operate on. So we put off a lot of maintenance, we put off and replace fans, done all that stuff. But there, are, I, I want to say there's somewhere in the order of, and off the top of my head, that there's 30 or 40 workstations within the building. And you have to maintain it. You have to keep moving them up. That number would put off for, uh, I think, three years, four years. So we when you say nothing. workstation, is that a, a, computers, a screen, computer. a computer, a we keyboard? Use the building. Or what? Yeah, the, the keyboards and stuff we use is a separate maintenance issue. That's the other line you see. You know, those types of things break. Someone drops something, something falls. Out. These are the actual <coughs> tower workstations. And our, our IT people say we need to keep up on them, and we do, so that they are more efficient as we're doing the work. That's all. Is this, this a is cubicle? A, think of this as a maintenance issue. Yeah. I don't, I guess, no, it's, uh, no, it's you, you clicked off quite a bit of number there, right? It would, certainly $4,000 wouldn't cover that big number you're talking about. No, it wouldn't. You well, take you those ones that are most critical, that's all. We, so we, we, put off, we put off, as we always have, we put off that maintenance stuff whenever we can. We need to, we put a number in there so we can replace it. So I think we've demonstrated being very, very reasonable what we come in for technology needs in our TV. In a perfect world, this would be a recurring expense and we would replace on a schedule over time. Yeah. The way we and have that's what we're doing. We milked them out for a long period of time. We haven't needed them over the last several years. It's time for us to start addressing that. That's why we're putting it into do just that. And ones that we have, do they have any residual value to us perhaps in another department? Yeah, Strip down? Yeah, I, I can't answer that right now. It depends on what they're pulling out, what they're doing. But again, our folks are very, very good at, at taking parts, using them to rebuild. That's why we haven't spent a lot of money in this over the years. Spend any it should be a maintenance account. I think for four thousand dollars for the amount of things we do in that, that's a pretty low number. Quite frankly, yeah, it just again though, okay. uh, it just pops in out of the sky. Okay, I've well, never seen that line item spent. No, I get what you're looking at, Jerry. I, I understand. So I just want to be informed of you that we, you know, Jerry, we need a lot clear on the budgets. We're trying to not spend money we don't need to spend. So the only problem is, is now I don't want to be penalized because we didn't spend money last year on computers. Yeah. When we're trying to get the most life out of those that we can. So, this represents three or four workstations? Probably more. I want to say, and again, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but I want to say the workstations he's doing are probably 400 bucks a pop, give or take. Uh, you know, again, without yeah. pulling his stuff, but that's probably the ballpark what we're dealing with. Does that sound reasonable for a workstation? Oh, yeah. That's absolutely, Jerry. But I'm just going to go back. Jeez. Okay. Chief? That concludes the administration section. If there are any follow-up questions before we proceed to crime control investigation. I'm going to start at this section and give everybody an opportunity to go around the table and ask questions. Okay, follow-up question on the... Administration only. Yeah, uh, on that question about the uh, uniform allowance for the 4450. And I'm not questioning the 4450, but I am questioning the fact that it's in a default budget and it says here, according to the note, <clears throat> that it is uh, contractual. And if I'm not confused about it, um, and the way you explain it, it doesn't seem like it's contractual at all. You're talking about uniform allowance under administration? Yes. It says wages contractual. I mean, it, I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with wages. It has to do with part of your union contracts, possibly to provide uniforms. But when we begin getting along with uh, roughly uh, 2,200, 2,500 for the last few years, like you guys talked about a few minutes ago, jumping up to nearly uh, uh, five grand, uh, it's not contractual at all. That should not be in a default budget. That number should not be. Another problem with the default budget is all I'm saying. <coughs> Another problem. That's all I'm pointing out. The default budget should not reflect the 40. Uh, 4878 is to reflect whatever's in the budget from <coughs> 40 uh, from uh, the, the chief did not make the default budget we know that I'm just I'm voicing okay. my, so everybody in the budget can make and realize it's a more problems than the default budget that's Appreciate all. now there's that. one question uh, the numbers that Michael's quoting he's mm -hmm. quoting a 4878 that's rentals and leases what I, I'm, I'm on the wrong line 4450 yeah. okay so I just want to make sure I'm following <laughs> 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 okay. now, it, it, it's awfully small I'm old so Anyway, putting uh, the uniform allowance at uh, 4210, one, 
four ninety. Yep. Going okay. across, you got twenty two fifty three, twenty four fifty, like Jerry was indicating earlier, and now we're up to forty four fifty, and it says wages contractual. My point is, it's not wages contractual. Therefore, the default budget should reflect what was in the budget for twenty fourteen. Wages contractual. I'm not where where you seeing that wording. I'm looking at. Uniform allowance, Thank queen you. for chief and deputy. It's under comments at the side. You may not have that. I don't have that. Okay. Yeah, Jerry, you're talking about the default budget, which the chief doesn't have any control. Right. I don't have that. No, I, I wasn't talking to him, uh, yeah. uh, assistant manager uh, Sullivan. I was talking to the budget committee saying that this brings out another problem with the default budget. So all I was doing has nothing to do with giving him the third degree. Thank you, yeah. Mr. <laughs> chief. So Sorry. you always put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, now I have no questions on this area. I've got some general questions I'll wait for. Yes, sir. Okay, Brian. Um, whom is your prosecutor? I mean, I don't need a name, but I mean, do you... So it's a member of the department. In, He's a department. sergeant of the police department. Because my brother did this, and now does he get a... What kind of contract does he end with? He's under the CBA with the Hampton Police Association. He's a police sergeant. Okay, so he's not getting overtime, or is he getting overtime? He is a police sergeant that's covered by the CBA, which allows for overtime. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, we can't use surplus money for the uniform? And that was my only um, problem down here. <laughs> Um, for the uniform allowance administration? Yes. Well, the problem. 4900. I'm on. The problem with that would be you'd be asking me right now to spend surplus money to buy <coughs> those things that we would need for next year, and I can't tell you what those are as we sit here day to day because I can't tell you if. I'm going to need to get new shirts or new pants or the deputy's going to need something. Or if there's an award, I can't tell you what that's going to be. It's it's an estimate of what we're seeing and the uniform costs going up and the costs of having badges replaced. Those are kind of as, as an as-needed basis. So you could do it, but I, I don't know what list of items you'd like me to go buy right now that I could tell you that I'd use up in 2015 or would be sitting on a shelf and not being used. And I'm trying to avoid keeping things sitting on shelves that we're not using. <coughs> I can understand that, but um, I'm going to let go. I'm going to throw a question out back to Fred and Christy. You may or may not have the answer. Can you give us an idea on what we're tracking with, with what we'll end up with as surplus in this budget in 2014? I don't expect an exact. I haven't done the November numbers yet. I'm hoping to have it by the middle of next week. But I know that at the end of October, we were very, we were at uh, 70, 80, we were at 82.07% of, instead of 83.3, which was the target. We all had about 281,000 under budget. Under budget, yeah. For the whole town, yeah. Not just this budget, that's the whole town. That's the whole town, yeah. No, I, un I understand. It's fairly... I mean, before we start <coughs> spending money out of the surplus, however, my only comment on some of these things, like the workstations, like the badges that you do probably do know or could know within a week's time how many badges <coughs> could be replaced, um, I would like to see myself some of the surplus, should there be any, some of those issues taken care of this year, out of this year's budget. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. Through October, uh, I project uh, annualized it in the uh, 3,681,837, or 158K surplus through October. So there will be, there will be something left. Oh, yeah. oh, but you know what? We still have Mother Nature, so who knows if that will lead it up in some snowstorm. I'm not sure if I can just... Absolutely. Uh, just so you're aware, every year, all of the departments, including this one, are asked just that. What are those surplus issues if we have money? Those lists are coming in, and they're prioritized. So that is being done, not to confuse anybody. The ones we're talking about, some of these, and I can just speak from my prior experience, these are the very low priority stuff. These are the things that mm -hmm. if... 
we don't get them, then we're going to do it out again, right? So that is happening, and we are mindful of that. But that number is the, the Christie quoted to you from the entire town is down below what we were last year. So we're being mindful and slow about that. But we, that process is ongoing. Absolutely, and it would certainly help the budget committee if, as determinations are made as we get closer, even to the end, to adjust on the surplus and pull something out of the surplus to pay for something in the 2015 budget that the budget committee is informed so that perhaps we can make the adjustments accordingly as well. Michael. No questions. No questions. Jim. Uh, hi, Jim. Um, did I understand that the um, overtime wages were totally related to uh, computer maintenance work internally? Did I understand that accurately? No. No. In administration? Yes. No, that was the, the overtime that we talked about for the uh, computers was under um, computer. It's a combined that was a comment under doing it under computer development. Yeah, why is computer development repair considered part of overtime wages? Okay, so that is an item where we have several people, um, including a lieutenant, who oversees our system. Mm -hmm. Then if he has to come in and work on it at different times, then we have we can pay him for that. that that's what that item is. So is it under various line items? Or is it under one line item? Or is it in administration or not in administration? It would depend who's doing the work. Is administration covered? Yeah, administration only covers certain people. It covers it covers um, myself, the deputy, okay. um, the that prosecutor, the and certain that secretaries, and certain special items like that. So the overtime in administration has got nothing to do with computer maintenance, right? No, because we also have those occurrences where I have to pay secretaries or my assistant mm -hmm. to come in and work function work. I just want to get the confusion out of my brain. You're confused? I was. <laughs> but now, now I'm clarified, thank, thanks to your assistance. Um, the Rich, I think we better look back on that. Tim, I hate to keep jumping in, but I think you just said that computer repair is not included in that light item. Is that correct? Well, my initial understanding was that's what the conversation was suggesting. That's a mixed account that does include, include the computer overtime. Some of it does. And the other <coughs> stuff. It's records, it's prosecution, so it's a mixed account. So it's a salad bowl, basically. Correct. Okay. If you want to describe it that way. All right. So, so the overtime is owned by the individual who's doing it, and that individual may so be in different areas. The overtime is owned by the department, and if we need to have them do work for us, that's the line item for those types of actions. That's how I understood it. Yes, sir. But I just want to be clear, Tim. I think yeah, I got a little fuzzy there. Sure. So the bottom line on this question is really we don't have visibility to what the computer maintenance costs actually are in the in the form of the accounting that we maintain. In the form of the budget sheet? No, you wouldn't see that. It's specifically to that because, again, it also encompasses... Do you maintain that internally? Yeah. You do? Accounting sheets? No, accounting sheets for overtime for... Computer problems, as opposed to say it was administrative assistant problem. It's not an easy data point to break up. But you I just wanted to know whether you're presently doing it or not. That's all. Uh, and the other one is a computer-related visibility question, which is under new equipment. Did I understand that the new equipment? That's all about com new, uh, taking care of the computers, hardware. Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. <coughs> Uh, just a comment first. You know, I think it, it would help all of us here on the board and also the chief as we go around with the questions if we would refer to the line item that we're looking at uh, rather than just say, well, you're under uh, overtime. I think it would help if we said look, it was overtime under 42102. So we could follow the actual line item that somebody is questioning. I agree. I think it would make it easier for all of us. Right now, I am looking at line item 42101, new equipment. Uh, again, uh, Chief, I'm not clear as to what is a workstation as defined by you. Well, I heard, I heard Brian make a comment that that includes cubicles. No, the cubicle is, is part of the office setup. The workstation is the computer. Okay. The computer itself? Yes. <laughs> And any peripherals you can attach there too, right? It could include monitors. We had a, a while sure. where we had those old box style monitors. Right. And we, you know, a few years ago we had to get rid of a bunch of those because they just started greening out on us. 
and we, we have a difficulty getting enough workstations on a busy summer night for guys to get the work done because either the terminal was failing or the screen was failing. Well, I guess it's just my misconception yeah. of what a workstation is. Yeah, uh, I guess like Brian says, I'm thinking of a little cubicle with the computer mm -hmm. set up. And no, the cubicles are there. We're just going to put the equipment inside oh, them. Okay. That's what we're looking for. All right, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just one question under the a follow up to Tim's question on computers. Uh, is there any reason the town's IT department is handling all of this? Well, we do run into the issues of, of security. It, it's one of those issues where we're a little bit different than everybody else because we, we do tie into mm -hmm. other assets that are okay. See, some of them that carry a secret clearance. I was just wondering why Paul Paquette couldn't be sworn in with secret clearance. Well, Paul does assist us on some issues, but as okay. far as maintaining the system, because they're the experts, I would assume. Um, we have some experts in our in our building too. They're pretty good. At okay. it. Um, so we feel comfortable with that. That it's sworn sworn folks. See, if, obviously, if I didn't have sworn people that could handle that, I might explore something like that or a private vendor. Okay. But that I, I was just thinking they may get a better deal from the town on purchasing the IT department than you guys might. But again, as I told uh, the chair, that, that that is something I'm looking at. Hope that's now. Right. Thank you. It's just one of those things I'm not prepared to make any statements on it. Change as we speak. I'll say. Are you able to say what would have to come out of this part of your budget if the default default budget were voted in? Not particularly at this point. No, I'd have to really take a hard look at what historically what happens when we default when when that occurs is we'll we get a number from uh, the selectman, the manager, you know. Usually it's the big three, police, fire, and uh, DPW. So the models that uh, Chief Sullivan used to do is probably exactly what I'm going to do based upon what we've seen historically, this amount of cut, this amount of cut, or this amount of percentage-wise, and just kind of somewhere it'll fall in between that. So to say exactly what I would do, no, I wouldn't uh, be prepared to answer that question tonight. Relative to the administration section of your budget, your default is $474,500 less than the proposal. Just for your information, Bob. That's just the administration portion. Jim? I'm all set, thank you. Thank you. I'm all set. Okay. I have an amendment. I have an amendment. An amendment. Or a proposal or a bond. I have a motion to reduce the budget by $6,000. Is there a line item in particular they're going to take that out of? I have two. Okay. Do you want to explain it? Do I have a second? I'll second for discussion. Um, I'll take my glasses off so I can read my notes. <laughs> 4201 4000. Can you do what? 101? 4201. 4900, I'm sorry. 4900, okay. What is it? Uniform allowance. Uniform allowance. Mr. Remove, $2,000. We have never gone above $2,000, and all of a sudden it's reached $4,000. The other part of it is. 4201 yes. 740 In the workstation? Yes. You want to eliminate that? Yeah. 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 I mean, for four thousand dollars, you could have built cubicles. No. Um, <laughs> I just can't see that this year. Um, I'm getting a ton of. Oh, I'm just going to leave it at that. But that's my motion. The four thousand. You want to take the whole thing so out? I want to take six thousand dollars out of that budget, out of the administrative budget. Any further discussion on the amendment? 
I got a question that 4,000 he wants to make it zero then on the 7,400. Yes. Huh? 4,000 from the new equipment and 2,000 from uniform. Got yes. that. Oh, I got sense. the uniform. Okay. Any further discussion? Well, we have to have a second. Mm -hmm. oh. We have a second from Jerry okay. for the discussion. Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment? All those opposed? Abstentions? Sunny? Back to the original motion. I'd like, I'd like to make a motion. An amendment? Mm -hmm. Motion to amend. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. His, his motion. His, his, yes. his I, amendment so failed. I'd like, I'd like to make a motion or amend his motion to yeah. take 2000 out of the uniform allowance. Period. I'll second that one. What that? Out of the uniform allowance. Okay. So 2000 totally all out of the uniform allowance. Right. That's. Can you set the line up? 42, 101, 4900. Okay. All those I'd in like favor? To, I'd like to get a reaction to that motion from the chief if I could. Yeah, I think we can leave that for discussion, chief. Well, if you look at the number, you have Queen for the chief deputy Michael, this is what you were talk, talking about earlier about whether it's contractual or not. It's not part of a CBA, I'll agree, but there are those costs that we have to deal with, um, dealing with that part of it. And then back to patches, badges, and awards. All right. Maybe I forgot to mention, there are a lot of new people coming in and out of the Hampton PD as we speak. Um, right now, uh, I have two officers coming out of the academy, and they've been equipped, but that, that is a substantial amount of money to equip an officer. We have 10 folks right now coming through uh, for the part-time class. Hopefully we can retain all 10. That's going to cost us some money, and some of that money is born through some of that with the patches and all those issues. So. Um, I understand your concerns that we haven't spent it in the past, but as we move forward, uh, we know that we've been dealing with a issue with our staffing levels. Mm -hmm. We're making every effort we can to get those staffing levels up, and that's going to cost us some of the money in some of those areas to deal with. So um, I'm not advocating for it, and I would not recommend that you cut that. But don't I, but don't I see uniform allowance pop up into two or three or four of these mm -hmm. sections? Mm -hmm. seems to me every time I turned into a section, I saw uniform allowances. Well, Jerry, you're aware that probationary employees don't get that, right? No, I'm not aware of that. I, I don't okay, they that. don't. So that uniform allowance would not cover that. A new, a new hire, we outfit. So contractually, I understand what you're saying. It may appear that way, but that is not the case. Crime control is not at uniform allowance. So a new Certainly. hire would come out of this? Portions of it, the patches, Portions those type of things. Now, there are, you, when we get further down in the budget, you'll see other sections where we do uniforms and all that. My point being is, it's not cheap to outfit a police officer these yeah. days. Easy to understand. How many people just are ballpark number? Right now? Did you expect to out to come out of this particular piece? I'm hope. Well, not totally out of that piece. Pieces totally. of it. Right. I understand. Uh, we're hoping to outfit ten officers. So if, if ten officers come on, that's two shirts per officer. Pardon me, three shirts per officer. Two patches on each arm, and the patches aren't cheap. There's a cost for that, um, and you have to buy them at certain amounts. You can't just buy the amount you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, they sell them sometimes by the gross, whatever it is that their cut their cut point is, to manufacture those items. So, um, I understand that we haven't been spending a, a lot out of that area, but again, some of the badges are coming to an issue where they need to be repaired if they're going to look professional. So, I'm not recommending the cut. Mm -hmm. And I'm going around to the Do you want to go, Richard? No, go ahead. No. Chief, you're asking for uh, what the board of selectmen approves $4,450 for this line item. The amendment that we're addressing now is going to reduce that to $2,450. The budget doesn't pass. The default budget has a mere $750 on that line item. How, how are we going to manage this situation if, if, in fact, we operate again next year under the default budget? 
we're really down to a budget based on needs as opposed to wants. Um, I like the officers to look professional. I walked down the hallway, was just discussing it today with a couple of folks that you see some of the uniforms are starting to get worn. They get faded being in the sunlight, including the patches. You need to replace that. Where do they get the patches? They come to us. So if I have to say, let it go, and not be as strict on those type of things, and I guess that's what I'll have to do. I hope we don't get to that point. You know, I want a professional-looking police force to reflect this community, but if we get to a default situation and we're cutting here, as we said, I'm going to have to consider those things. Okay, so if we are in a default, you'll find a way to manage, basically, but we wouldn't be as uh, polished as we might want to appear. We will always do the best we can for you, Tim, with the money that we were given by the board. But, yes, we, we may have to look at things and okay. change the way we do business. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Chief, you said that uh, you look f you're looking forward to ten, 10 officers coming on. Are you talking about the summer? Yes, the summer specials. There currently we have 10 in process. Now, do we uniform them? Yes, we do. With badges and? Badges, sure. They get completely outfitted by the police department. Um, and for the first two years, they are not subject <coughs> to the uniform, uh, the uniform allowance. So every year, as this new crew comes on, they're provided with, with a uniform? Correct. At the end of the summer, what happens to that uniform? <coughs> if they maintain their status with us as an employee, uh, they retain those uniforms. Okay. So, you know, they get, you know, keep in mind, this sworn throughout the year. I mean, their primary schedule is during during the summer season. Right. But you'll see special officers working <coughs> any time of the year, working details or working covering shifts for people. So I think that's a little bit of a misnomer. They work year-round with us. They just don't have a regular schedule after the summer season. So part of this uniform allowance is for the, <coughs> these 10 that are, may be coming on. Right. A portion of it, portion. and I want to be very clear on that. That will not outfit ten officers. A right. portion, things like patches. Every officer has to have patches right. on their uniforms. And badges. Every officer has to wear badges by by state law. I prefer to have our badges looking professional, real, reflect the professional nature of the police department, and that's what we're trying to achieve with that. And obviously, the award issues I also spoke of. Thank you. But those people coming out would be under support services. The budget for uniform pay is ten thousand dollars for fifteen. Up from 7,500 uh, budgeted. You uh, mean a different section here? I know. That's why part time people coming in right here under support. That's the $10,000 budgeted in there. So it's not, he started by telling us it's not entirely coming out. Of this. You're very clear. I'm not trying to advocate that we're outfitting 10 new officers out of that line. I think I've said that a couple of times. It's pieces of it, the items that are listed, badges, patches, those come out of that line. They're an expense. Sure. You know, you're not dealing with administration here, so wouldn't this be uniforms as it relates to administration? Yeah. Or is this uniforms as it relates to the entire department? As far as the badges go, no, this that's for the maintenance on the badges. <coughs> you know, I, don't, I don't believe if you look anywhere in the budget, you're going to see under uniform allowance badges or awards in any of the other sections. I don't think so. So this, I don't quite understand whether this line applies only to administration <coughs> personnel or to the entire department. Chief Walsh used to get these in bulk. Who? Chief Walsh. Way back. I mean, now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who? He's still the only chief. We used to get these in bulk. Chief Wren? Wren. Yeah, Walter Wren. There is no Chief Walsh. Anyway, <laughs> we did buy those. Two chiefs ago, we used to get these in bulk. <laughs> so we chief, chief Sawyer, bringing it up to the current yeah. day, okay. could you yeah. give us an idea, when you send a badge out to be refinished, or when you buy a badge, could you give us an idea on what those run? Uh, the, the exact budget is the initial purchase price. Yeah. Yeah. The new badge, 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 the It'll, it'll, it'll cut back predominantly what the, the target was to, to replace badges that have fallen apart. Right. The, the badges roughly run, depending on the numbers you buy, anywhere from like $47 to 70 depending on how many. Yeah. The less you buy, the more it is. The more you buy, the less it is. They're not cheap items. And they're not cheap items. The budget has shown you you haven't done this in a while. So the badges that you have lying around are beginning to look a little dingy, to say the least. Um, <coughs> I think it helps us to have some idea on the cost involved in those badges and in the patches because they are quite costly. 
still not really clear on what this line item means. Is it related to the <laughs> administration only or for the whole department? It has two separate areas to do it. The uniform allowance, which means the cleaning and purchase for the deputy chief and the chief, plus all the patches, badges, and awards for the entire department. That's what's in that line item. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Okay. Any well, these uniforms only for the they've only spent 1100 dollars. This is almost a 300 percent increase. But if you haven't done, while well, I agree, okay, if you have not done something in a while, <coughs> then if, if you were going at a rate of doing five a year or a half, you know, a dozen a year, and then all of a sudden you saw a jump like this, that would be one thing. But if you have not been doing anything, <coughs> and all of a sudden. Point, you're at a point that you would have at to do it. At fifty dollars a badge, you could replace all badges for two thousand dollars. Replace the brand new. But I think there's something going on. I think the chief, you maybe clarify this. We've had, you know, uh, we have a new chief yourself, <coughs> and and you know this is where your uniforms get paid out of this. And a new deputy chief, his uniform gets paid out of this, right? Yep. And I assume you guys are getting new uniforms because you got new positions. Or at least you're going to get new badges. And there are a lot of other people in the department who have gotten promotions or whatever, so they're getting new badges. They're all coming out of this line item, right? Yes. Okay, so that would really explain why we're, we're having an increase this, or anticipating an increase this year, was because of the, the shuffling around that's going on, basically. You explained it so much better than me. <laughs> I'm glad I got clarity in my own head. Anyway, hopefully I spoke clear. <laughs> but still, it's 400%. That's well, what's I just have a question for the Excuse chair. Me, but it goes back to what I said. So Ryan, Ryan moved to, to amend the line item and take four thousand dollars out of the line item. That was voted on. Then Jerry moved the same line item no. to amend it to be reduced by two thousand dollars. Shouldn't Jerry have moved to amend Brian's original <laughs> motion? So we wouldn't be debating. That's not what took place. That's not what took place. He made two motions. He made a motion. He had two items. I explained my motion. That's all it was doing. His Your motion was defeated. So right. you start it was fresh. defeated. So right. what we have is another mm -hmm. amendment. <coughs> and now I think we've had enough we discussion ready? on it. I think we're ready. Okay. All those in favor of reducing the uniform line by two thousand dollars. Michael Pierce. <coughs> Okay. All those opposed. Okay. And abstentions. <laughs> Is that an abstention, Mr. Jones? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the motion fails. All right, going back to the original amount. Page forty seven. Four, Already four hundred eighty-three thousand seven hundred thirty. All those in favor? Opposed? Yeah. Just three. Only opposed. Okay. And abstentions? Did you want more? No, I just want to make sure we get we have everybody. Okay, and no abstentions? Okay. Moving on to the next section. Page 51, right? Yes. I moved uh, 439,418 dollars. Second. Second by Mr. Plot. Return it back to you, Chief. We're in uh, crime control and investigation. 42102. Correct. Pages 47, 48, 49, 50, and 51. <coughs> we'll be referring to. Uh, first question was regular wages up 4.17%. Again, that is CBA only. There are no discretionary raises involved in that. Uh, those raises uh, include mm -hmm. the detective sergeant and five detectives. Okay, that helps. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uniform pay. Here we go. For your actual, <laughs> <laughs> you a lot of pockets for uniform pay. No, you're gonna understand this one, Jerry, because we've gone over this one before in the past. It, it's a contractual issue. This is contractual. Okay. If you may recall, we have a, a current contract that increased the uh, 
amount in that area. I believe it's 750 per. So if you do that out, I think that will probably cover the area that you were concerned that was raised in concern in the question. So it's an increase of the CBA uniform allowance. Is that what it is? Yes. It's entirely contractual. Yes. So is everybody getting when you say uniform pay, does that mean new uniforms? Does that mean cleaning? Right, no, uh, the, the folks uh, in the collective bargaining units are different than uh, the deputy uh, the administrator. We get ours the way we just went over. They get that as part of a uh, check that they get to spend as they need on the uniform issues that may arise. So if I tell an officer that shirt is worn, you need to get a new shirt, it's his responsibility based on the fact that he gets that uh, uniform allowance, the uniform pay to go down and make the purchase and make the, the uh, shirt conform to department standards. So how many how many people are here in this? That is the detective sergeant and five detectives. Six, 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 six people and yep. they each get how much? 750. 750. Yeah. Six at 750. Six people. No, just the sergeant and the detective. Okay, that multiplies <laughs> out 4,500, as you say. Two oh, detectives. I'll explain it. Okay. okay. Can we move off the uniforms now? Career incentive, four-year average was 1,375. Asking, um, again, you. actual budget by CBA for each employee at the time <clears> of the budget. <throat> Now, this career incentive, can you explain that, Chief? Career incentive is, and this is going to get confusing because we just talked about money for the 10000 that we have yeah. for uh, college tuition reimbursement. Career incentive is for folks that already have their degrees, and that's why CBA is for what they receive, depending on the level of degrees that they have. We did add a couple of folks in uh, detectives that have degrees. So by getting the degree, they, they get incrementally more pay? If they come into the department with a degree, they get that stipend. stipend. And some guys have gone out, got their, got their degrees while they've been with the department, they are now eligible for that stipend. But that is a contractual issue. So the four-year average was thirteen seventy-five. you're saying these one or two extra fellows who come in with their degrees? <coughs> And as we speak, we have people in the office that are, are advancing their education also. So we brought some Which folks in. Yeah, always good. Okay. So they get this money as soon as they get their degree, or doesn't doesn't this get part of their wages or what? No, because we're going to get to another question. Somebody asked a question in here regarding why we hadn't spent money in certain portions of that. Those those checks are cut contractually. I believe those checks were just uh, put out last week. The contract, the uh, career incentive checks. Correct. No. So you won't see the expenditure in your uh, November. November. December. I, uh, pardon me, October. You'll see it in your December. No, my That's question it. was, what triggers uh, the uh, creating of, it, of, it, of the payment? I mean, as soon as they get a bachelor's degree, we get, here's a thousand bucks, or yeah. Once once we see they present us with the documentation, if somebody comes in and they're claiming I have a bachelor's, mm -hmm. we want to see um, right. proper documents for that. That makes them eligible for that for that uh, stipend. Once we uh, documented through the town office through finance that this mm. person is eligible for it, those checks are all. Uh, I believe it was the last pay period that those checks were cut. And, does, and that just is that's just a one-time thing. So one I get, time. okay. One time. And, and does it does it spur an increase in wage as well? I believe under federal labor law, you have to somehow factor that in. Uh, in your overtime rates, not in your straight rates, but in your overtime rates. I would think that would be a union thing, then, but uh, oh, so it's a union thing, but it's a Department of Labor issue also, as far as a pay issue. It's a bonus. So if they get a master's degree, they get incrementally more. Yes. And a doctor's nothing degree. More than a, nothing more than a, a bachelor's is paid for under the contracts. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it's okay. We're I think the max is a thousand. I think the max one is a thousand dollars. Three hundred, five hundred, a thousand. Thirty credit hours, associates, bachelors. So you you think you have the uh, 
3,300 pretty well covered with, by, with people coming in and are going to be. You have I don't see a lot of change over in that office, so I don't see a big change coming in that number. That means our numbers fluctuate depending on people coming and going, but that's an office where you have to have a degree of um, experience before you can go out back in the detectives. So you, you'll see the folks out there probably a little more seasoned and a little more stable in their positions within the department. Yeah, you, you've spent 1375 on the average over the last four years, so you must be expecting. But well, that's the actual people in those positions. That's yeah. what they have yep. for the education level. That's all that difference is, Jerry. The difference is, is people coming in recently have had degrees, and also we've had people get degrees okay. while they're there, all right. sitting in place. Okay. Rentals and leases. For your actual cost, it's been 300 and now 2,268. Um, that is more of a scoring issue than anything. Um, I went back and looked at that today as to why we had only spent that small amount uh, in that area. That used to cover pages, and we don't have many pages left in the department, honestly. It's, it's more uh, phone issues. And I went back and looked. The phones for the folks out in detectives have been being paid out of our regular phone account as opposed to this, which is this what should reflect payment of those phones out of that CID account. So that's just a scoring error. Well, does that mean the other account gets lowered? I think when we get to that, when you look at telephones, I don't think it, it, it's going to need to be, but we'll look at that when we get to that in the building. Telephones. Would it be, would it be telephones in this section, Chief? No, it'll be telephones, I believe, in the building section, Jerry. That would be for the whole department. Correct. Because when I look, I pulled the bills out today to look at that, because that okay. brought my attention. That one was kind of glaring, and I noticed that all of the phones, command, staff, and detectives are all paid out of the same account. So that's just a scoring issue. Okay. Supplies and expense. Up 39.5 for your actuals out there. Um, needs of the department. If you look at the types of investigations that we have become involved in, um, they're becoming more technology driven. Um, more of the presentations that we have to give before grand juries and other investigative bodies. It's just requiring that we have these things. Uh, we just saw the case that we got involved in with a human trafficking case. Okay, that all was initiated through a member of our department that belongs to a group that does internet crimes. Um, we get involved in a lot of that. It's just there's, there's more of that out there than you really want to think about. Um, and to, in order for us to stay active in those investigations. We have to have the supplies to do those things. Um, so that's just, that's what we're, we're seeing trending is those type of investigations. And obviously we're seeing a lot of stuff going on in our, our drug enforcement and issues with dealing with the heroin. Um, it eats up supplies, it eats up evidence issues. Uh, so evidence October, supplies. you spent four grand. <laughs> so. You know, my difficulty is is that I look at his history, four years, and I have a figure in my mind somewhere with an upper and lower control of it. You're higher than that. Your backup data doesn't really come across hard to me. That's what my problem is in almost every damn line I don't hear. Yeah, Jerry, and we've experienced that conversation before. I understand that you, I would love to be able to tell you, come in here and tell you that for the 2015, how many heroin overdoses we're going to have and how many this, but it just doesn't work that way in our business to try to annualized by month for a police department like Hampton, it's just, I wish I could give you a better grasp well, I mean, of that in a manner. In the last four years, you've averaged $3,500, you're coming in asking for $69.75 with a story. Um, um, excuse me? <laughs> with, with a story. <laughs> your, average, your average, Jerry, is average of budget requests? Actuals. Actuals, because I see in 2012 the actuals was $7,105. Mm -hmm. I figured that. Yeah. And in spite of that actual, they only asked for uh, I mean, it, it's a, five thousand in a subsequent it a, year. It was an aberration, maybe. Right. But they spent thirteen, thirty-nine, and all eleven. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, I think this is a difficult uh, line item two, to predict. Two, two seven seven five and oh thirteen. Okay. Four thousand year to date. So I mean, I, I just. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I see your point, but I think this is a difficult one to, to project you out. That you could say that every No, some of them are difficult than others. Let me ask this question. Chief Sawyer, is there anything in this particular line <clears throat> that is on the list of, let's say, equipment or an item that you need that could be achieved under the surplus should we have one? I would prefer not to give you an answer to that tonight. I'd prefer to go speak with my detective sergeant to see what those issues are that, again, we're, we're coming up against the want as opposed <coughs> to the need. Well, want and need sometimes yep. in your department is one and the same, just mm -hmm. given on the situation, which yep. may or may not present itself. But if you could update us if there is, let's say, something in particular that has a dollar amount to it that could be achieved and out of this year's residual. Let well, me we confer with Detective Sergeant Champion on those needs and check with the manager and see where we're at with that and I will try to get back to you before the end of the week. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, I have a motion. Well, we're not done with we're this. Not Still going we're still on, on this. Well, we're done we're with Jerry's question. That was my question. Yeah. Well, we're good the table. Training and recruitment? Right. No, training not and yet. Recruitment. We're going to do a round table of questions. Yeah. No, it's still we're, part of the we're still same. going to training. We're still 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 training. We're still going to training. We're still going to training. We're still going to training. Number of officers training. Um, I think the issue is some of the stuff that we had hoped to do uh, under those items. If I think we're looking at maybe I'm misplaced at this particular yeah, point, I think we but we're not. We're not done. We were on this question. But the question that I have for you, before you get into the numbers on this, is through the years following on this committee with where we should be for manpower and where we are with manpower, um, I think there's like a Grand Canyon kind of divide where we once were and where we are now. Am I accurate in saying that? Where we need to be? Yeah, I'm sure you're aware that we uh, moved forward uh, with, try, with a warrant article to mm -hmm. try to add three positions to the department. And those um, three positions, of course, will need to be trained. Yes, absolutely. Now that comes in, three positions would be utilized to backfill the areas where we're, try, we're truly trying to address. I mean, I think it's obvious to everybody that reads a paper in, the, in this area that we have a huge heroin problem, okay? And we need to do more um, in the area of enforcement. I, I know education <coughs> and counseling is a very important part of the, of the equation, but enforcement for us in this town is what we need to be doing. We need to find the people that are dealing these things that are killing people and arrest them. But we don't right now have a, a specific officer assigned to work drugs. It's a need. Gentlemen, excuse me. It's been a need for a number of years in this community. Um, we would love dearly to get you know an officer just that focuses on the drug issues. We would like to have an officer that is trained up in dealing with community response issues, such as dealing with crimes against the elderly. As we all know in the community of Hampton, I mean, this country is getting older demographically. The state of New Hampshire is older than the, the national average, and the town of Hampton is older than the state average. Mm -hmm. You see developments that are going up with the condo projects up and down Route, Route 1. They're 55 and older condominium projects. We're dealing with crimes where people are being targeted because of their age. We're also dealing with, you know, being older. We're dealing with crimes, horrific ones, that they're targeting children. And the ongoing issues where we have domestics. We need to have somebody that is trained to follow up with those types of things. This was a plan that we had tried to move forward Right when I first came into this department, back, you know, way back in the dark ages, you know, of 1996. We've been talking about this, and before that, I mean, I've lived in this town, I believe we did a perf study back in the late 80s that said the Hampton Police Department 
needs to work on these issues, and particularly if you just talk numbers, recommended the department force of full-time officers of 40. We're still at 34. <coughs> so we're, we are trying for many years, we've tried to do more with less. It's just we're kind of at that, that tilting point of we could be going down the path of doing less with less if we don't pay attention to these things. And I don't think this is an area where we want to do less with less when, you, when you're talking about the problems, not just the town of Hampton, this region is experiencing with the drug issues, the computer crimes, and particularly the crimes targeting those different age groups. And that, that was truly what we were trying to address with the three bodies we asked for. It just didn't survive the process this year. Um, rest assured, I'll be coming back next year uh, looking to get those because uh, I believe we need it. It's not a want, I believe it's a need. So it's not on the warrant article either. Is it? It, no, it is not. It is yeah. not on the warrant article this year. There's no way we can train someone to make them sign a contract to say, okay, we're going to pay for it, but you're going to be here two years. That would be part of collective bargaining, which is something we can't affect here. That's, that's, a, that's a negotiation between I would just curious towns. Yeah, you, there are many communities that do that. I, I think that's a mixed bag as to how effective those are, uh, to be honest with you. Um, and we have a pretty good idea of who our people are over the years because we traditionally hire from our part-time ranks. We generally don't get people skipping out on us too quick. We usually get, you know, it's kind of a thing in any career, you know, folks get here three, four, five years. They start looking. You, know, you can't help it. You want to see what's over the hedge, but most of them stick it out here. But you're paying a third of your recruitment go, which we paid for. I'm sorry, say that again? A third of, you know, out of ten people, in general, seven a, you know, might stay. Three are going to go. You're, you're talking part time. I'm talking full time. Okay. Okay. These are full time positions. We'll get to those part times, but that is a, a good discussion we yeah. should have. Okay. Uh, but right now, I'm talking about full time positions. These are three full time positions that we'd like to add to cover those areas I just highlighted. But what Thank we you. would do is those would take more experienced and trained officers. We elevate people into those areas and then backfill with newer, younger patrolmen. That's how we would do that. Okay. I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. No. That sounds good. I think we're, we've exhausted that section, but I'm going, wait, 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 everybody has the right questions now, so Dave, if you could, no, Michael. I don't have any questions right now, thank you. Sonny? i got one question. Yes, sir. <coughs> when the officers get training, and Brian suggested, you know, that some of them leave because they can get more money somewhere else. And you said it's part of the negotiated contract. It would seem to me it would make sense to have it negotiated in the contract. If they leave within two or three years, they have to pay back some other tuition. Can I ask you a question? Talk to this gentleman right here. Are we, are we talking about full-time positions or part-time? Both. Full-time? The ones that fall under the contract. Okay, and which is full and part-time? I mean, I'll give you the, the quick, easy version of it. Full-time positions... We could try to negotiate that. You see that in many communities, but we don't experience that big of a problem with people leaving within, usually it's a two-year period to cover the cost of sending them to the academy is what you say. If you leave within two years, let's say you leave in six months, you pay back a prorated portion. Okay. We don't experience that in this department no, to any degree. Fine. The part-time issue, yeah, we have them, they come and they go. There is no way for us to do that because they're part-time employees. You, can't, you could not get them to sign a contract because they have a degree of liberty rights with a part-time employment that's different than a full-time employee. I don't believe it would be legal, and I certainly don't think the union would ever come across yeah, for part-time officers. They don't want to stay anyway. Well, they're, they're all starting their careers, and they're all you know looking for that next thing, and if we don't have a vacancy at the time, they're going to look at Manchester National Lab. But we also have shown... Uh, we're picking up some folks with some more experience in other careers um, that are there just for part-time positions. And we try to find that happy mix that I always want to have a deep bench when I have a full-time position because it's we have something we call the Hampton Advantage. We know the people we hire. We're not going out and finding somebody cold off the street that we know nothing about. We've seen these people working right shoulder to shoulder with the full-time guys. So we have a good idea who's going to be a good Hampton police officer, and we've had a lot of success with that program. It's just we're in a different time. Officers look to go somewhere else. You know, part timers are looking to go full time. They stop looking, and because we do a good job recruiting and training, they get hired. So. Thank you, Sam. Jim? Set. Thank you. Brian? Set. Okay. Michael? Set. 
Stephen. All set, thank you. Tim. This particular subline, <coughs> subtotal, is uh, proposed to go up 4.31%, relatively small amount. The only thing that stands out to me here is the increase in uh, training at 20%. But this line, I, this, this subtotal is about crime control and investigations only, not your whole department again, right? right? Correct. So I'll try to keep that in context. You did mention the nature of crime itself is changing relative to age, target, <coughs> and uh, human slavery. Did you ever think we'd be talking about that at this table? That we'd be talking about human slavery cases in Hampton, but we are. <laughs> you know, this, this stuff human is, trafficking. This stuff has been going on for a long time. If you watch C-SPAN, you'll pick up on it. Eventually, everything comes to every place, and that includes Hampton. Hampton's not immune to any of this stuff. I agree with you, but that's, that's kind of new for a lot of people to, when I, the calls and comments I got when that made the news, People were horrified that there was human trafficking going on. Yeah, when it finally got into the lamestream media, yeah. Yeah, it just, it's just what happens, you know. But the, uh, the point was that you were talking about earlier with someone across the table here about increased personnel. Um, it would seem to me that, and maybe I'm wrong, again, you can collect, correct some fog in my mind. Crime control and investigations, to me, that speaks of, like, undercover detectives and things like that. Um, I would never say that we're going to be undercover. We're not a big enough group like that. There might be somebody who goes off to a drug task force and works that for a period of time to get experience, but I don't believe that we're ever going to be, you know, having an undercover unit. We're going to have people that work specific drug cases. And most of our drug cases aren't made that way. Okay. They're made because <coughs> good people don't like seeing this in the community and they call us and let us know what's going on. So crime control is really a, 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 uh, a detective in uniform activity. No, it, it could be a detective in uniform, it could be a detective in plain clothes. It's it's a multifaceted approach. Okay. Okay. It's but it is detective. That's it's what detectives, detectives yes. are. Okay. Yes. I just want to get clarity on what that line was. Yeah. It's just detectives basically. Yes. Okay, great. Thanks. No more questions. Chief, you said that under this there are six people, was it two sergeants and four detectives? One and sergeant and, and five detectives. And five detectives. And going back to that forty two one oh two, nineteen fifty career incentive. $3,300. How do you determine how much of that monies go to... What if, what if there's two individuals that come forward that have got their master's degree? That's contractual. It, it, the contract tells you that if you have this level of degree, you know, if you have a master's degree or bachelor's, it's $1,000. Right. I believe it's an associate's is 500 and if you have 30 credits, it's 300 It's spelled out in the contract. So if an officer comes in and presents the proof, you know, um, got, got his degree, <coughs> he's got the, uh, all the documentation from the school, then he's eligible for that, that incentive. He just has to present the documents to us. What if, more than, what if more than one or two or three come in with that same... Uh, then it goes up. But you've only got 3300 bucks in the budget. That accounts for when the budget was developed, right. that accounts for what we had in place at the time the budget was developed. Right. Now looking forward, I do not anticipate, and things could change, oh, right. but again, keep in mind who detectives are. They're not somebody, that's not a new officer, that's somebody with some experience and specific skill sets that we've put into those positions. Those are appointed positions, <coughs> we, we, we get to say who goes in there. And we're pretty particular about who goes in there, because um, you're dealing with some of the real nasty stuff. You know, you're dealing with the things I've highlighted. Mm -hmm. So those aren't people that come and go. They're not um, generally people that are looking to go where, elsewhere, and that is really a, a a pathway in a career that uh, people spend years in because you have to develop those skills to do drug investigations, to do computer investigations. That's not something you walk in the door with. Is that also <coughs> kind of for a service line? No, no, that is not. That is something when we talked about the first come, first serve, that is for the tuition reimbursement. We've, we set an amount and we, I don't think we've ever exceeded the amount that we've set um, because. It's not guaranteed to anybody. It's whatever the amount is that we have for, for tuition reimbursement, that's what it is. And once we're out, we're out. This is different. If somebody else were to come into that office, or somebody else was to gain a degree next year, which I don't anticipate happening, but it could, then we'd have to pay them because that's contractual. That's a contractual number as opposed to the, the tuition reimbursement, which is a town policy. And we only put so much money aside. That's first come, first serve. This is contractual, it has to be paid. 
if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. On uh, page 51, 42102, 8200, Mounted Patrol. I see that in 2013 we spent 26955. Well, I'm still 42102. We're still in the same same area. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. I'm sorry. We spent 20, uh, 26955. Then in 2014 went up to 33511, but he only used 2788. Now you're requesting to go back up to 33511, mm -hmm. and yet I don't see any uniform allowance. For the mounted patrol unit. Back on page 50. Buy, you're just not scheduled to buy them additional breaches and boots. That's all been paid. Oh, but the number you're looking at, that 33 something, is what our estimate is. The house, feed, vet, feria, some of that gets it's estimated. All right, well, when I see that there's no zero, when I see there's a zero amount for uniform, I figure, oh, gee, maybe they're not going to have the mounted patrol. Them <laughs> to, to the ship. All right, so the, the uniforms that they have it is now. Uh, will be yep. great for next year. And yes, the horses are in the crime control section. They're, they're, they're out of and they'll be horses. back on the street next year. Right? Yes. Detective horses, yeah. Yes. And they're only ridden by detectives? No. <laughs> 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 there's anomalies there. Very well-trained detective horses. They detect more than places. The horses, the the horses the themselves the are detectives. Detective. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. assistant. The new town manager? Their uniforms The new town manager? Do we have a new time manager? Are you going to ride this? No. All right, so there's nothing to do with the right, There's right. only so much in the vet, though. All right, that answers my question. Thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Glenn, Bob. Um, I just noticed we skipped over gasoline, which I think needs to be reevaluated in all budgets. Mm -hmm. I pay 269 a gallon in Massachusetts. All right, as we said, we're going to take that in an entirety. Okay. All right, in every department at the end. Three months from now, whenever. <laughs> no, very soon. Mm. But Chief, you mentioned several times there's a serious heroin problem in the community. Is there any plan to train the police department to administer NIDOM as an antidote for heroin overdoses? Mm -hmm. A lot of departments, I think, are starting to move into that. You mean the Narcan? Yeah. The Narcan. Yeah. Um, I don't have any plans to, for them to learn to administer at this <coughs> point particularly because we have a great working relationship with the Hampton Fire Department uh, and quite frankly their response times get to these things sometimes they beat us there because a lot of times those calls because it's a medical aid go to the fire department instead of us because if you call 911 they're going to ask you what do you need police fire medical I need medical so that call will go to the fire department first so many times they're, they're getting there before we are and they're on top of that um, it's something we could consider, but I'd have to coordinate that with uh, fire and rescue to get the training. Can I, can I add to that? There's two other points to that. One is that there's a legislative fix necessary for that because this falls under the EMS, what you're authorized to do for medical in the field. Because there's two types of NICAN. One's a nasal injection. Correct. The other is an injection. Um, no, we're not trained and certified to do injections. It's, it's not something we'd be able to do as law mm -hmm. enforcement. I, I but there are a number of legislative pieces exploring to give the authority to do that. Um, and when that happens, then the chief would be able to potentially evaluate if he wanted to deal with that in the community. My understanding was the police departments were only doing the nasal right. injection. You, not, absolutely. You're not going to be doing injections yeah. unless you're yeah, paramedic but, or an eye. But, but the legislation still needs to release them to do the nasal. You see in a lot of Massachusetts agencies where they have that ability. Mm -hmm. In New Hampshire, that, that is underway a discussion. I, I think there was a piece of legislation presented uh, last I knew that was contemplating that here. Uh, um, Jim. Just as a follow-up to that, have you looked at the pricing of that so that if that if that became a policy midway through, um, if you started equipping the officers of the cruises with NACAN, what, what the cost would be? At this particular point, it's not a reality because the legislative change would have to happen. If that became a reality, mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure I'm taking it from the fire department. We'll give it to you. Okay. <laughs> you know. What I'm no, no, I'm just, no. I'm just saying um, that, 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 that item it seems like something that you'd want to have. I don't a know. Number. What, I got to be honest. I'm not sure what fire rescue carries now. If they carry both the injection and the nasal, and that would have to be a discussion to have with them because, in order to store those items, we're going to have to get some guidance from them as to how to properly store 
and maintain those items. Are we going to maintain those in the police department? Are we going to maintain those in the fire department? You know, if we needed to, say we used a nasal and we needed to resupply, is that supply going to be kept in the police department? But that would all have to be kept between us and the uh, fire department. You know, before we go down that path from a dollar and cent standpoint, which is what we're here for, our fire department is excellent in that regard. Chief Sawyer is saying that at this point in time, most of the time the fire department feeds them to the scene. While we have things that we can certainly focus on, I don't know that this is one area that we need to at this With point. With all due respect, though, I wasn't questioning you, Mr. Chairman. I'm quite, I was questioning the chief. So I'm expecting my answer to come from the chief and not from you. My only point was to be prepared if the if, if I think it's inevitable that you're going to carry NACAN because it seems to be that's the trend every department is carrying it so all I'm saying is I would be prepared with those numbers so if you want to add them to your supplies you're going to know what those numbers are I mean we, we just spent 20 minutes talking about two thousand dollars mm -hmm. all I'm saying is to be proactive I would say here's what my numbers are going to be that's all I'm saying it's just a suggestion I mean I'll look at it but I'm not prepared to give that in a budget mm -hmm. for something that doesn't legally yep. exist I, 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 didn't, I didn't ask for that I'm just no. saying that's something I would consider I will take a look at it because you know what the process is going to be if you want to come back for it so because it might be more than two thousand dollars that's all I have Yep. All right. Now, Brian, I think you had an amendment. I have an amendment. I'm going to keep at this, but here it goes. I have a motion to amend to remove $249 for 212-3920 consultants. I'll leave the dollar in there if they need to move some money around for consultants. What is it? What was that? 42102. 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, the sub line item doesn't Is there a it, second for this, this amendment? Kind of a I'll second that one. We can afford that. You're going to second it? Is there any discussion on this? No. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion fails. <laughs> Back to the original <laughs> motion. Jim? Yeah. Uh, I moved $439,418. All those in favor? <coughs> the post. And extensions done? Okay. Going to take a strict 10 minute break at this point in time. Please be back in your seats at the <coughs> yeah. Going forward, um, let's go back to the questions. And the next section, actually, Jim, if you could move us to the next section. 57, is that the page? Yes. yes. Okay. Two million one hundred and twenty-eight thousand four hundred forty-two. Still on page 57, correct? Yes. Page 57. Well, it begins on 52. We jump to the end. There are a lot of things in this section that have been explained, at least in an overview in some of the previous sections. And um, I'm going to turn this back over to Chief Sawyer. Thank you. Uh, regular wages, again, that's a CBA issue, no management description there. And there was one issue I think somebody. Um, there's no lieutenant added to that position. I know in the budget sheets it may reflect that, but that was removed. We are not seeking to add a lieutenant in the process this year. Is the CBA again? The wages are CBA, but I know there was a uh, some, uh, question that we referred to the uh, 
restoration of lieutenant that is not contained in the budget at this point. Okay, it's not in the budget. It is not in the budget at this point. Overtime, uh, overtime training wages up 28 percent. Um, those are based on projected training needs and the increased training requirements that we experience. Um, again, I know sometimes we get a little concerned about why did we spend this much over the last three or four years. There comes time, sometimes when we have to add to our training regimen. Uh, several years ago, you may have recalled, uh, we had set up a driving school in the municipal parking lot in front of PD because many of our officers had never received any driving, police driving course. So we sent a bunch of our guys off to become police driving instructors and we ran our own course right there at the PD for every officer in the department. That is something I would like to accomplish again next year if possible to get some of these new folks um, the proper manner in which to drive a cruiser. But those are our projected training uh, requirements. Career incentives, that's an increase of 7.69. Uh, yet no money spent in 2014. Again, you will see that in your December actuals. Those checks just went out. Okay, so that's why you didn't see them in your October. Mm -hmm. Vehicle replacement, request 82,000 for four new cars. Uh, was any money used, uh, somebody was asking about, was there any money used in the revolving fund, which is the special detail account? We use money from that account every year, for portions of this. Um, if it's for outfitting the car or for out, like, purchasing the vehicle, depending on what that, what that number would be in that account. <laughs> yeah, but you're asking for 82K here, and uh, you got a balance of 143,788 in the in that revolver. Yeah. So my question is, is, are you taking any money out of that bucket to help mitigate some of that 82,000? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't see it. Let me get the back. Original cost like is, the original transfer. cost for four cars is 112. Right. 30,000 is coming out of that bucket. Oh, all right. That. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah. That. Page 58. 30,000, you said? Yes, sir. And yeah. it's reflected in the page 58. 58. Different topic. Okay. Oh, he's over here with me on the request. Training and recruitment. Okay, that's up uh, 33%. So wait, let me just clarify that. Vehicle replacement, 112K in total, 30K coming out of the 143. The remaining is 82. That's correct. Is that how I understand it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we should see some kind of a cost transfer then out of the... Well, I, I guess I didn't, I didn't see it. That's funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, training and recruitment. Up 33%, over 14. Um, zero spent year to date. Up to October. Two issues. Again, it's going to be some of the... Um, training classes, and there was a scoring issue in that account. But the training issue, uh, the training classes um, as part of recruitment, those are going to be things that are tuition based. We've been very fortunate over the last several years that we've been able to host a lot of our own training in the building, but that's not always going to be the case, so we still have the budget for that. You know, some of the, the classes we have at Hampton PD draw people from across the country and up into Canada, but I can't promise you that we're going to be able to host that in Hampton every year. These people have other obligations, so we may have to send people off, and these are primarily supervisory schools that we try to get people into um, and get them exposed to that. I'd like to tell you we're going to have it every year, but I can't promise that, so I still have to budget for those type of things that are tuition-based. And the, the costs that go with that, if I have to send them out of town and they have to stay overnight, there's other contractual obligations. But that's what that budget is for. When we host it, do we make anything? Yes, we save. We don't charge. Um, if we bring in FBI WIDA, which is probably the premier law enforcement executive development group in the country, we get a number of seats depending on how many they fill in our in our room. So if we if we can seat say 44 students, I usually get four free slots. Those are at six hundred dollars per seat. And we also are paying to travel expenses or lodging expenses or meal expenses. So there's a savings there. Okay? But we can't always do that because it's a very competitive market to host these trainings. Right now, 
they like us. So FBI Weeder, this is their home. <coughs> it's been for a couple of years. I can't tell you next year or the year after it's going to be. And there's other groups that are developing their, their programs. Um, we have a group that comes out of Florida uh, that does some of our evidence training. Evidence rooms are very critical. Uh, for me to send them to Florida for that, three or four people to go that, that's going to be a costly expenditure. If I can get them to come up here, that's great, but I can't promise that that's going to happen. Um, again, some of the other specialized areas I'm telling you about, you got to travel to, to maintain your training and your qualifications. Three out of the last four years, Chief, zero dollars. Here comes 2000 So you're telling me I did a good job not spending zero money. dollars okay. with a story. You have a story. No, well, an explanation, Jerry. The story, the story, <laughs> I'm sorry, maybe it's my police officer nature that when you say I'm telling a story, when I tell somebody I'm they're telling me a story, it means that I'm implying that they're not in there being upfront with you. I hope you think I'm being upfront with I you. I think you are. Uh, but we may differ in our opinions, but I'm being upfront with you while we're spending the money. I go, you've been down there, you've seen the classes, you've, I've talked to you about this before. We do everything we can in house. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. But I can't promise it that that's always going to be the way, so I have to have that Let me rephrase it. Zero dollars spent over the last four years, three out of the last four, but an explanation that goes with it. It's a softer, gentler approach. We're all evolving, Jerry. We've worked together a lot of years, so it's evolving. But again, I understand your point, point taken, that we haven't spent any, but again, what happens when I can't? host these things or have the ability to get them somewhere else. I have to have the ability to maintain a professional standard. That's what that is. Um, so that's, I believe, the last question in that session. Yes. Well, train is next. That was the last question from Jerry. From 42. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Stand correct. <laughs> All right. So we are at. Jim, would you repeat the number? Is there any discussion? Yeah, I have some All right. Questions. So we'll go around the table. Start over here with Joe. All set. Jim? All set. All set. All set. All set. The career incentive chief. Uh, is that number contractual? All career incentives are CBA. Last year we budgeted 13, and this year we're budgeting 14. Okay. Does the contract explicitly call for that? For the, for the career incentives? No, for that, for that increase. So we're going from 13,000 to 14,000. No, the contract does not specifically address the number as a bottom line. What it addresses is the individual officer. So if I have a, let's say I had an associate's degree this year, but I finished up my bachelor's, I would get an increase in that number. I got that piece. Okay. I just observe that the uh, <coughs> budget last year was thirteen thousand dollars, and it's inserted into the default budget is fourteen thousand dollars. With that, Madam Chair, I have no further. Questions or observations? Okay. I'm all set, thank you. I'm all set. I'm good. Brian? Brian? Yeah, I'm with it. Sonny, come back here? Um, yes, please. Sonny? Okay. Bye. Yes, I'll follow up on that question. <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> this is oh, here. Yeah, Selectman Waddle oh. seeks recognition, Madam Chair. Uh oh, he's been like a, missed a very time. important person here. The acting training chief. Yes. Would you say that that's one of the most important things you guys do? I mean, with, with what everything that's going on in the country nowadays. I mean, and you've talked a lot about professional, looking professional, acting <coughs> professional. I mean. When you talk about training budgets and stuff going up, would you say that's one of the most important things? Absolutely. I, I look at the issues that we face today where, let's face it, people do line up to sue the government sometimes, and we generally are the ones that are most sued. Because we're out there, we take the greatest risk and liabilities for the community, without a doubt. Okay? With that, I look at everything differently now than I did 20 years ago or 25 years ago. Is I look at everything as risk management now. Why do we do it this way when we could lessen the risk of the liability of the town if we did it this way? And, that, and that's really what we're trying to get across to our people. That's training. Okay, that, that's, 
you can look at officers at different stages of their career and you can see the difference of where they started and what, what their perception of that is compared to what it is for these for the new guys coming in. A lot of the training um, is getting some of us old dogs in line with what's new and modern and what's contemporary. And you have to train them. Just because they've been there 15 years doesn't mean you don't have to continue. It, it's, it's evolving. I think we use the word. It evolves. We are not a static entity where you know, we create a police officer in the academy and he's ready to go for the next 20 years. That, that just isn't the way it is because I've been around 25 years and it's a different view from 25 years ago. It's a totally different world um, and what we expect. If you ask me that we'd be considering, you know, we were talking about cruisers and cars back then. Now we're talking about body cameras for every police officer in this country because of issues that are happening around the country. Those are things we have to prepare for. That I wouldn't have predicted, you know, it's, it's just... Training is our liability shield. That's the best way I can put it. In, in, in effect, training saves money. I, my belief is in the long run, yes. You see departments that, that emphasize their training. Um, I believe that, yeah, they'll get sued, but those lawsuits are less successful because you have protocols, procedures that meet an industry standard, if you use a private term, industry standards. And we try to meet those, we try to exceed those. I don't want to just meet standards. I want to exceed standards. So when somebody says that the Hampton Police did this, no, we didn't. This is what we did, and here's our protocol for it, and we followed it. That's all for me. Thank you. Uh, yes, I was just going to follow up on one of Tim's questions about the uh, 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 the uh, amount being uh, 13000 what one are we talking about? Uh, this is the uh, career incentive, and also while we're there, I'll talk about the one right next to it, the, uh, uh, not the holiday pay. No, the career incentive is one I was talking about. Could you about. give me the line item number? Oh, I'm sorry, it's 4210-3195 on OBS 6. Not OBS, that's the uh, summary page. And over <laughs> here, it's, um, uh, where is it? Career incentive on the traffic control patrol. Yes. Yeah, That's, suffix uh, is 1950. Yeah. Right. So yeah. 4213.1950. There you go. Yeah. Okay, the last number I have is 14,000 over 4. Mm -hmm. 14,000, and it was 13 and uh, 12, 12, 14. And uh, 14, right. And my question is if, if this is a incentive based on people who come in and suppose they get a degree or get a higher level of education as an incentive, which I have no problem with that part by itself, but how do you, you're guessing when you're saying that this, this might be 14,000 for um, over 13,000 for 14, and yet it's in the default budget is 14,000, so I, I can't see how that'd be contractual in the default budget. Another problem with the default budget. But how do you know that you're going to have more in 15 and you're doing 14. Being it's something where they may or may not graduate or get an associate's degree or that sort of thing. Again, the number reflects the time the budget process started. Right. When we started the process back in July, yeah. that's what it reflected. Now as we move forward, yeah. yes, if I know somebody's within a semester or two of graduating, yeah. I'm going to put that in the budget to be on the safe side. Right. Now, are the chances that they, they drop and don't do it? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a consideration. So it's basically a little bit of an educated guess. No, it, it's, it's a number based on what we started the process in July. You use July as the jumping off point that that, would, that is when this was developed. Christy, okay. I've got a question for you on that. Looking at that, and going back to the actual, the 20, um, 2013, the actual was 14.6. Right. Now, that 2014 budget of 13, was that an adjusted amount due to the fact that we were in default this year on the default budget? I would have to go back and look at the default when it was created last year. I guess I the only point though. being it may have been higher. And adjusted. I think it was default. adjusted. I think once it comes back yeah. as a default, the selectmen of town manager right. then sit down and put the monies where they think the line items. They did not do that this year. 
they let all the line items stay where they Well, were. I'm talking about career incentives. Yeah, it doesn't matter what line item you're talking about. The Board of Selectmen made no adjustments to the line items themselves. You're talking about just now. He's talking about for the beginning of uh, last, right. the beginning of 14 from 13. Right, that's what I'm talking about. But the beginning this, of this year. The only point being on this one in the argument between 13 and 14 in, in 2013, we already spent more than the 14. Yeah. Yeah. So going to 14 is... You're not increasing anything. You already spent more than that two years ago. Yeah, we already that. All right. I'm not debating that, but no, I'm, I'm just saying I'm, I'm just that pointing that out. I'm, I'm pointing out that the default budget again is incorrect. Oh, well, I'm, we're not here to do the default, Michael. I'm, I'm but I know, what you, I know what you're saying. I'm pointing but that I'm out to the public that the default budget is incorrect. I'll we're say. here to do this budget, and I just want to point out that on that line, for any discussion, we're, we're going back under the 2013 amount. We spent fourteen thousand six hundred dollars in twenty thirteen, and we're only asking for fourteen. The chief's only asking for fourteen in this line. Chief asked for seventeen. Two thousand thirteen. That's where we are right now. We spent fourteen six. Now we're down to fourteen. Two thousand thirteen's budget request and was thirteen six. No, the budget request last year was 13.6. The budget, of course, failed. So it ended up going back to the default, which was the prior year. Right. Okay. Okay. Of 13. David. Okay. Um, Madam Chairman, you said something earlier that I've been thinking of, and that was we don't want to punish departments for being good in previous years and therefore mm. not having them being able to ask for things. I think this is one department that... We can't always look at what happened in the past because so much is changing right now. Um, the selectmen pointed out things like training. I, I think there's so much going on that there are parts of their budget that we shouldn't look at what we've done in the past. We need to look at what we're currently faced with. I think you, you talked about appearance of your officers, training. I think they represent our town. And to a lot of people, it's, it's the way the appearance of the police department, the way they act, how professional they are, is a reflection on our town. So I, I just want to point out that I think in their department we need to look at the way the world is changing so much that we can't just look at what we did last year or the year before. We need to look at what's the right thing to do now and on a go forward basis. So mm -hmm. I, I just want to say I think your training um, is extremely important. And we need to keep that in mind when we make these decisions. Thank you. And I agree with you. And the only thing I'm going to throw into that is a little bit of my point of view. If you look around in other towns and see crowd control that gets out of hand, that's almost something that never happens in this town, and we take it for granted. And um, the training has a lot to do with that. Tim? Ma Madam Chair, as I consider an amendment, uh, I'd like some feedback on this observation, particularly from the selectmen as well as the chief. Uh, the training line item under traffic control and patrol, traffic control and patrol, the chief recommended $3,000. Am I got that right? Yeah. Well, 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 That's on page 57. Its suffix is 8100. You can see the, for this budget proposal, has requested $3,000. 42103 dot 8100. Yes. The, the, the chief, the department head, yeah. requested $3,000 for this line item. Training. We've heard a lot of good discussion about the importance of training. It's very compelling. I, I agree with that statement <coughs> wholly. The department head requested $3,000. The town manager said, no, we're only going to give you two. The Board of Selectmen jumped on and said, yeah, two is enough. Now, after hearing all this uh, talk about training, I'm wondering, gee, maybe we should think about giving him $1,000 that the town manager <coughs> and the Board of Selectmen took away. I'd encourage a conversation on that. Okay, so are you... Chief, would you, would you like to respond to that? Um, just to you know, clarify, just so some people may be a little confused, we had training wages, which was covers things, uh, monthly, you know, search training and, and training out in patrol. What the item you're talking about is, um... The 8100 account, Chief. 
it's yeah, it's yeah. more of a career development issue that there are a number of opportunities like physical fitness. Yeah, it's important. It is. And we want to be able to test our new employees as they come in to make sure we're not wasting our time and money <coughs> on people that aren't going to meet the state standard when they go up to the academy. So you have to be trained in the proper way to do that. So that's what that is. That really narrows that down to people that are doing things like that specific type of training. Mm -hmm. So yes, if we could get the thousand back, that would be great. Um, because Thank those you. are the things we do. And again, we use a lot of that. It's training and recruitment. And I think we've all, and we'll, I'm sure the conversation will come up at some point, we are constantly, constantly recruiting mm -hmm. and trying to fill our, backfill our part-time ranks. Thank you, Chief. Selectman Waller, would, would, would you like to amend your motion? I don't, I didn't make them. I'm not, I'm not amending it, but I, I said I would go along with that. Okay, you, you don't right. want to make the amendments? No. Okay. So you make the amendment? <laughs> well, whenever I can, I will try to support the Board of Selectmen. <laughs> or put them on the spot. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, no, I'll put myself in the spot. You've got to be a good sport like me. I, I, move, I, I move we grant the Chief's original request of $3,000 for account number 42103.8100. Raise it from $2,000 to $3,000. I'll second that. I didn't, don't put yourself in a spot now. <laughs> manager adjusted it because the last three out of the four years he spent zero. Zero. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Or, or didn't get a second. Uh, All right, we did get a second. We have a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like, I like uh, to make some discussion. Discussion. We've a second. We've got a second. How about discussion? Our discussion is, like Jerry said, it's been zero for a while. And now we want three thousand, and but two thousand seems like a pretty good starting place that we haven't spent any money to speak of in a period of time. So I don't think there's anything wrong with two thousand dollars at all. So I think it's I, I'm against this motion completely. I will. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. I have to agree with uh, uh, Dave that uh, yes, we've got to look to the future. And, you know, it's, it's a, a battle cry all over the country that police officers need more training. Well, we, I don't think we're exempt from that. Uh, I think the police officers here do an excellent job, but for another $3,000, if it's going to increase the training and the, uh, uh, the general atmosphere of the, how the police operate in this town, I'm, I'm all for it. I, I would vote in favor of increasing it to three thousand dollars. Okay. Any My other? point would be that there's already a training weight mm -hmm. section, which uh, is 118,000. It's a different line. Well, this out. is a different section. Uh, well, no. The it's bottom the same line section, budget. The same section: traffic control and patrol. Where are you seeing the? Uh, uh, right below our total. Page 53. 1450. 1450. 1450. An increase of almost 30 percent. Mm -hmm. Why are there two separate training wages? Those are overtime wages. One is wages. One is. One is training wages. Well, whether it be overtime. paid under really overtime or regular is immaterial. So one is for the program, and one is for. Right. Wages for those participating in the program. Uh, the one he's referring to, the one oh, is, is a wage that's paying people to go to training or the backfill or people that are instructed to pay them to perform that training. What we're talking about is more tuition or program based. Uh, okay. It, it's 2000. I think that clarifies for you. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor? I have an amendment. Yeah, You're going to amend vote. the amendment? <laughs> we have to vote on No, you can amend the first. amendment if he wishes. You're, are you amending the amendment? No, he's amending the motion. Amending the motion. Well, the motion is what he Go, 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 in favor? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Affirmative. Yeah, that's, okay. In favor over here? Five, six in favor, so. Okay. Well, 
And opposed? Yeah. Right. Let's keep going. What's the vote? <coughs> five six. Five. What was uh, it? Or nine to six. It was nine. Nine to six. in or favor. Six, six. Nine no. Six yes. Yes. Six nine. So right. motion fails. The motion failed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The motion to increase failed. <laughs> now, Brian, you had another amendment you wanted to put out there. Yeah. <laughs> Why not go twice? I bring it down. Page fifty-seven. Vehicle. Oh no. Wrong page. What page? Page. Consultants. Fifty-five. Top line. Yeah. To reduce that two hundred and forty. I mean, to reduce the one dollar. What's the line number? The line item is 3920. 42103, 3920. We have more consultants. You're in a different section. We're not on that. I'm sorry. You're in a different section. They're coming up next. Well, we're done with the other section. We're still on 42103. We're in the right section. Traffic control and traffic control. 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 That's part of the All right, we're doing. All right got it. Yeah. Go ahead. That was in the got next it. one. Okay. Go ahead. What do you want to do with this, yeah. Brian? Take it down to the dollar. Reduce down to a dollar. That way they can move the money over if they need a consultant. But we don't need consultants in every line, I don't think. But can we ask the chief what is, what is the definition of the consultant there? I don't know. Yeah. It seems totally different. I mean, what the evaluations. But even so. All right. Let's have a second on the motion. Do we I have second that? it. You have second for discussion. I shall second it. All right, Joe, you're right. If we could ask the chief to it just seems this is a different definition of consultant. Right. Yeah. Okay. Brian, I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, and if we're going to do that, I would like to at least keep the line item open. But that is uh, what we use for debriefing and return to duty evaluations. Officers that get involved in critical incidents, uh, it's becoming more and more of an issue uh, in this region and it's becoming more and more of a professional standard that before we put a guy back out on the road that's been through a critical incident, he needs to sit down and talk about it with a professional. Okay, so if that's something you think we should cut, I'm gonna have to disagree with it. I am not, vehemently. I am only cutting it to the point where there's a doll, which means if you need to move money over there, you can. I am totally with you on this, is, is the reason. It doesn't feel like it. But $249, I'm leaving the about, budget line open what, for what you to put on to an move over. What are you going to do with $250? Oh, it's about an hour. Right. Let's get across, across the start. Right. Okay. But where does it go from there? We won't know until it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So two hundred and fifty dollars is going to cover that. Uh, so you're, would you amend your motion to increase it? <laughs> <laughs> I would. I would love to. Actually, that would. I would love if you to would do that. I'll support. Triple it. <laughs> <laughs> and then some, but at least I'm leaving the dollar in there so that you can move money in if you need to. Okay. But we have consultants in different divisions. Different. Yes. Different things. To do different things. And now I'm, all I'm asking is that, I mean, I don't think, where's the $249? It hasn't been there before. It's always been. It hasn't been used all the time. Yes, yeah, right. Right. So I'm leaving you the option of moving some money over. You're leaving the line open. You're I'm leaving the line open. That's. I understand. That's Thank you. Move the question. Madam Chair. I. Quite honestly, we're not going to spend any more time on this. It's two hundred and fifty dollars. Be quick. And does it have a point? Yes, it does. All right. Quick. Chief, uh, I yes. seconded this motion, and I'm happy to, you know, not vote in favor of this motion, if since we're exchanging, you know, support. Uh, if you will support removing the two hundred and fifty dollars that doesn't belong in the default budget, because it's there in the default budget, it, has and it doesn't belong there. 
And, and, and if you can, su- if you can support, you know, the he the motion from the board of selectmen to remove it as is their authority to do, then I'd be happy to vote against this motion. Otherwise, I have to vote this for this motion for that reason because it's out and run around the voter. Let's vote. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the amendment to reduce this line to two hundred and twenty-nine dollars? No, to one dollar. To one dollar. I'm sorry. I'll reduce it by two hundred twenty-nine dollars. To one dollar. All right. All those in favor? <laughs> All those opposed? The rest of the world. Well, not quite. <laughs> no abstentions. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Bring the number on 57 now, or? Yes. Please. Yeah. Move 2,128,442. I think we just did that. Wait a minute. We already have a motion. Yeah. Okay, we already did. He's repeating it. We've asked him to repeat it. We have a It's already seconded. We're just going to vote on it. Yeah, we're going to vote on it now. We just discussed that. Or we're just repeating it. Thank you. Let us know yeah. where we are. Yeah. All those in favor? Wow. Opposed? Here's some Jones. Anybody else? Abstain? Now we're going to do this with the training thing. Yeah. Okay. Fell off. The bottom of the thing. Mr. Waddell is moving $49,324, and Mr. Jones is seconded. Thank line you. item number 42104810. Is that correct, Mr. Woodell? Yeah, I'm looking for the page. <laughs> page 57. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yeah. 49,324. Yes, <laughs> I seconded it. All right. In the spirit of continuance, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Moving things along smart. One question. Yeah, there is a question on it. And we're going to turn that over to Chief Sawyer. We the question was uh, training. That's four two one zero point four. Training recruitment up one hundred and forty six point three five percent, or forty one thousand one hundred twenty four dollars. Uh, most of that um, is a substantial need for upgrades and purchases of things such as tasers, our pepper balls, we talked about crowd control, if things were to get bad, things that we would utilize in that. Uh, we also are looking to um, swap out some of our firearms that have reached that time where they need to be swapped out. And that's primary, the weapons upgrade. stop you, is there a list available? Or that could be made available to us to give us an idea on what that line is. I think we have an idea. How many tasers do we have on the bench right now? At least 10. At least 10 of our tasers in our inventory are on the bench right now in our mm-hmm. So at a minimum, we'd be looking to purchase 10 tasers. Those are roughly $1,200 per unit. And there's associated costs of training with the, uh, the cartridges with that, because anybody that's using those required to train every year. Um, so the training ammo, so we could get you some ballpark numbers on that, depending on how many between now and then go down. They're at the end of their life expectancy. It's one of those things that we were one of the first departments to u- utilize the tasers, which again reduces the risk to the department, reduces injuries to the officers, reduces injuries to the folks that uh, are arrested. Uh, so it's something that we do advocate for. Uh, it's just, it's again, it's a training issue. Yeah, is it common for them to just stop working? <coughs> yes. So, oh. It's like anything else. It, 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 it's got a functional lifespan. Like I didn't think months. they were that old, but... Yeah, you <laughs> probably... You know, four to five years out of them. Like that. That's it? Yeah. So the, the atmosphere fits okay. into the weather. Okay. Keep in mind, they're made of plastic. That I mean, they, they're they not like a firearm made out of you know, There's steel and, and hard, <laughs> heavy, hardy things. They, they're, right. they're fragile. Okay. Is it a, a one shot? I mean, that's it? The no, it fires a cartridge, and the cartridge and fires and replaces the cartridge, but each oh, one of those yeah. cartridges back in the olden days when I was instructing were $20 a pop. I don't even know what they are now. Hmm. More. Yeah, more. Yeah, more. I would just say yeah. yeah. the equipment supplied to the police department would be better than well, No, here's the thing last I found out. You're kind of a very specific market, so the prices tend to go up when you're a specific market. They tend to get more for things that probably yeah. cost less. Okay. That's just the nature of doing business in law enforcement. Okay. Now, one thing I haven't seen during the discussion is the 
the surplus equipment from the military, from the federal government. Does that show up anywhere in your budget? What surplus equipment are you referring to? Weapons? Weapons? Equipment? We don't have a yeah, lot of that. We have a few, a few weapons, but we have not been really that eager to go down that route uh, to get the surplus equipment simply yeah. because it, it's well, the very. Price is right on all of that stuff. Um, I'll disagree with you. Yeah. Um, I'll disagree with you. On that. <laughs> it blows up your face. It, it's it's one of those issues where you have to maintain it, and a lot of times with it, if you have a piece of equipment that's no longer functioning, you can't just get rid of it. You have to go through a lengthy process. The administrative process for that and, and perception. I got to be honest with you. Right now, the perception of civilian police forces using military equipment is very negative, and um, perception is a lot to do with reality with people. And again, we want to present to the community and the people that visit here a professional police department. We do not want to be confused with the military, and I don't mean any disrespect. I was in the Marine Corps. I'm not in the Marine Corps anymore. I'm a police officer, so I have no intentions of getting Humvees or anything else for this community unless there's an absolute need and emergency to use it. I don't advocate that. I, I just don't think it's a good model to go after. And I honestly, I got to be, I would say within a year that program is going to go away. Simply politically, that's what's going on. It's you going that it. way now. It's going that way now. Yeah. President Obama has been speaking about it. He spoke about it yesterday in his speech. If, if that survives uh, to next summer, I'll be shocked that that system still is in place. So but I so appreciate you what you're saying. The cost is right, but it's just not going to be functional. So, so you're saying that you don't you don't need any grenade launchers? No. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, but... Don't put words in his mouth. I stand corrected. Well, I don't think we need an inventory to know whether or not you have one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's up in the back of the book. Okay. If I might. Yes. Um, we're, we're talking, I'm talking about the uh, training budget, training and recruitment, suffix 810. Here's the increase that Jerry's question was addressing itself to, I believe. Yep. yep. And... Maybe my brain is in a fog on this, Chief, and you can help clarify it. But did I hear you say that you were buying equipment out of that line item? That's the way it sounded. Yes. Yes, yes. sir. Yeah, the, the category seems to be a little... Oh. It's just the titles yeah. have always been that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's another order. anomaly? Is that what you mm -hmm. know? It's, it's, more it's, more for it's a forever anomaly. Yes, yeah. Yeah. if that's what you want to put it. Maybe, yeah. maybe we could seek to... Uh, Terminate the anomaly that, that is by not putting it. Really, more. a fan of change of any way. You always want to stay even, so we don't change words. When we don't <coughs> change. Well, well we I think what we're question. trying to do, yeah. we're trying to do, is, is find you know less opportunity to ask questions to the, which there are obvious answers that can be easily discerned if things were given an accountable, accountable visibility. And this is one of many examples. That I, I'm sure you know. This is the town manager, in which just engenders questions. That aren't even necessary if we, in fact, we had them properly uh, categorized. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah. And so that's what I'm asking. So much of this. Uh, uh, that's right. What this is a 146.35 percent increase. 146 mm -hmm. percent. Is that 146 percent nearly entirely, or even entirely, related to buying equipment? All. All equipment. So there's no training at all. targets, tasers, that's, what, that's what's so in that. Be, the line item should be changed the same yeah, yeah. 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 replacement. That's why we're asking the question. Yeah. Thank you, Chief. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. um, Are we ready for a vote? Yeah. Well, I, yes. I do have one quick question. <laughs> so the, none of this has to do with the warrant article. For the officers, I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's the warrant article stands alone on its own. The warrant article, just to be clear, is to do a recruitment of a class that we would train during the summer. I don't know if you recall. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know okay. Did, like, Remember that? And that, so, that's, that's sometimes I people get that, yeah. their arms wrapped about it. What we would do is, if this warrant article would have passed in March, we would run a training class of new part-time officers during the summer. Yeah, didn't you do like 15? Like they wouldn't come back to work for us until 16, but we would get yeah. that basic training. What we, the reason we developed that was we felt we were missing a recruitment market, being mm -hmm. particularly teachers, and I happened to have an intern that was interested, but he couldn't take the test and go to the school because he was at school down in Rhode Island. Yep. 
So this attracted that group of people, and we, we had some success with it. Um, and looking at recruitment, what it is, whatever it is we got to do to get people in the door and good quality people, that's what we're no, trying to do. No, I just want, didn't want to make sure that we didn't cross that line. No, okay, that's Thank a separate Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. We'll have plenty of time to talk about Warren articles down the road. Um, all right. I think we're ready to vote on this number. Yes. Right. 49,324. All those in favor? Opposed? And abstain? No one? Okay. Thank you. On to the next section. Next section on page 63. Yep. 812,797. Second. We'll turn it back to you, Chief. Support services, regular wages, again, that's CDA, that's up 2.84. Those are all uh, four people on uh, CDA. Okay. Part time special officer, uh, average actual cost per year, that's spelled out for you. Uh, I just don't believe it, it would be a wise item to, to uh, alter at this point. Moving forward, we've been trying to schedule, and the schedule that we're shooting for is approximately 160 shifts per week during that 12-week summer, and any of that overage stuff on either end when, when we need it. Um, that's just a number I understand. We're going to probably get into actuals over the last several years. Um, and again, the only thing I would say, consider the fact that Shot we're short-handed. We cannot predict what weather pattern we're going to experience, and a lot of what we do is weather-dependent. And we have been running short-handed. Uh, there's no getting around it. Um, there, there should be more officers out on the street trying to prevent things before they happen, or do it preventatively, trying to deal with these issues that we've highlighted, such as the drug problem, okay, particularly in the summertime when we have more people around. Um, this item has been increased in 2015 to 301. All I'm saying is, the last four years we budgeted as it states, and we have underspent significantly. I believe the police chief and Chief Sullivan budgeted on getting maybe 48 to 50 people to fill these particular positions, and they never arrived anywhere near. And, and uh, I, I would say that the numbers are going to predict the same thing in more 15. Exact same thing. This is way over budgeted. It's 70,000 higher than the historical average. To knock this down 70,000 dollars, and he wouldn't run the deficit. It's easy, easy, based off of the last four years. And he's up to three, and they increased it this year. On top of that, that's adding salt to the wound, so to speak. Um, <coughs> I, mean, I, just, I just don't see it. It doesn't have my support, never will. Okay. As soon as I see money being spent, and they can demonstrate, then I then I listen more carefully. Until then, no way. Okay. That's Anyone my, else? That's my on? position. Chief, sir? Uh, career... Oh, I'm sorry. Pardon me. Summer, Summer coverage, coverage full-time, and that, that reflects a, uh, a number where several years ago that used to be lumped in with the special officers uh, for selectmen wanted to see what amount of that account was being spent on full-time officers covering those shifts, so we separated those, and that's what that number reflects. <coughs> Court wages. Uh, I think it's a reasonable assessment. I understand things change within the court, and maybe you know there's years we're going to spend more, years we're going to spend less. It, it just comes down to who decides to contest a case. Uh, it depends a lot again on our summer activity. If we have a cloudy, cool summer, we're not going to be arresting as many people for those alcohol violations that we arrest a lot of people for. So our court costs go down. We get a hot summer. We get those holidays that you know we have uh, Fourth of July. I believe falls on a Saturday this year. If we have warm weather during that time frame, I'm suspecting we're probably going to be pretty busy. Uh, 
We got <coughs> five crashes. Fourth of July was a washout. I mean, it poured. It was yeah. just, it was the slowest Fourth of July I've ever worked. Uh, <coughs> I don't think we're going to get that much again. I don't believe in that type of luck. And we're going to get a, a rainy Fourth of July that's going to fall on a Saturday. Just call me superstitious, but so that's what that's built into. Uh, besides the court wages, uniform pay, it's up 33% to 10,000. Uh, CBA required, it's not a surplus issue. Radio maintenance. Or well, probably uniform pay. Yeah, we'll stop at the uniform pay if you want. Again? To deal with those. Or would you like to continue on? Uniform pay. Yeah, that's part of that section. Yeah, it's part of the section. Yeah, yeah. Contractual. Yeah. Oh. Radio maintenance and uniform alarms. Radio maintenance. Uh, we're talking about a camera replacement uh, throughout the building. Our went into that facility in 2005. So those cameras have been operating. They're starting to fail. We're starting to have issues where, particularly in my booking room, I'm seriously concerned. Obviously, we've seen recent events in the area where you want to have your cameras up and running to capture those things that are happening. It's a risk management and liability issues. I just think that's something that we can't avoid. It needs to be done. There's, there's another opportunity, though, to spend some money this year if you have some surplus. That's, an, that's a, a spike to me. It's an aberration. Where you know um, camera replacement is, is 33k here, and uh, it's just it's not in line with what you've historically. Jerry, can I just say something mm -hmm. to this? Yeah. Uh, as being an electrician, I've installed a lot of these systems and yeah. replacements. That's to me, that's not out of line. Mm -hmm. Stuff's going to be replaced. Yeah. Ten years. I worked down at the hotel down on the beach, and technology believe me, that technology. That's, we'll that's save your life. That's not. No, I'm not saying we don't do it. No, buy it. This yeah, but buy it this month rather than having impact. Over yeah, the what year it comes out? Jerry, I don't think we could accomplish that simply because if you look at the number, okay, and you remember the board, we have purchasing policy. There's no way I'm going to meet that purchasing mm -hmm. policy with that number before the new year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll have to go out to bid. Right. You gotta go out to bid. Yeah. yeah. We'd have to go yeah, to bid on that one. Yeah. Unless the selectman waives the purchasing policy. The waivers all the time. Mm -hmm. Forbid. Well, that's not in our court. Well, no, we can't rely on it necessarily. Yeah. No, I appreciate it. You can't replace just one of them rather than the whole system? No. You can replace the whole system. Period. I'll make you say that, Mr. Grabowski. Just because the, the uh, newer systems today use a cap. Chief the Grabowski. Use a cap system. No, I defer. He's got more expertise no, in this I mean, than I do. I think he's hitting The technology does not use a coax system anymore. They use a CAT6 cable today. Can you hook up a printer, a today's printer, to a computer you bought 10 years ago? Sure. Probably not. You bring the printer oh, 10 years. I can do almost anything with computers, but putting that aside, <laughs> you're saying that you're using CAT, you're using CAT6, why aren't you doing wireless? That's just, this is the age of that. They can't do that. Mike, how about yeah. we stick with the fact that this is what we spec'd out? If you like yeah. it, great. If not, that's fine, too. But, you know, but is that one camera, Chief? No, that's an entire thing. I think it's six system. cameras plus the backbone plus the new operating system, that's all. That number is projected based on our vendor that we use uh, as actually a monthly uh, cost so that we don't get into obsolescence again. We're talking about uh, having a, a, a user fee basically on that to keep those separate. And it also includes in some cases uh, putting in sound. Does that include the tower? I call it the tower like you used with the, the seafood festival, the one with the no, multiple. No, it doesn't. No. No, this is just the internal security system. Oh, yes. station. Yeah. And this will be a system and not just a purchase. That's correct. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like that idea even better. Did you say internal to the police station? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Moving on to uniforms. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I believe the last item in this section is going to be uniform allowance. It's up 111%. Um, I know there's some discussion possibly about buying now, and I'm not saying that I won't consider that, but we're targeting again for a class of 10 right now, so that includes um, uniform, not a uniform allowance, but the spe new special officer uniforms, special officer bullet resistant vests, and any other replacement <coughs> vests that we might, uh, might incur. Okay. 
Any questions? I'm going to start on this side with you, Joe. No, all set. All set. Yep. All set. Uh, just one question, Chief. Can yep. you explain whether the special officers are used all over Canton or primarily the beach? Primarily, uh, we assign them to the beach, especially with the number of, we're in a transitional stage where we have so many new officers, so we got to get them used to the beach operation because that's the principal area where we need them. That's what but I thought. Yeah, it is. But uh, my question is then is why aren't we building the beach for that? Building who? I, you are. The we are the town. You got to remember that. The, the <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll explain. explain. I don't really feel the average taxpayer in Glen Hill should pay more to be protected against tourists from tourists. I'll have to disagree with that. Okay. You're talking to somebody that grew up on the beach, so I'm probably not the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uptown chief. I I but the, the, town, the town does not specifically <laughs> derive revenue from operations at the beach. Of course it does. Yeah, yeah, a third of the tax is going to the restaurant. Here's what I'll tell you. Uh, you may disagree with my philosophy on this. We don't get extra items and meals because of the tourists at the beach. No, it's I'm sorry. Right. Yes, you do. No, we don't. No, we don't. It's by population. The town does. No, no, the businesses are valued very high, though, and they get the businesses contribute. And that okay. supports the town. We are running ground right? here, gentlemen. It's not a night for discussion, not tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I could just finish with yes, what I was trying to say. The businesses this are in the income. This is they should pay for the expense. Chief I'm has the floor. I don't believe I'm going to be able to get a word in there twice alone. Richard, when I get to the third time being interrupted, I'm done. My turn. 4210 radio maintenance, right? Jerry, I think uh, we, when your question here, camera replacement, I think this is another case of a situation where the, the heading of what we look in front of us is not appropriate to what is what we're talking about. You know, because this is, you're talking about a, a complete camera replacement, right? Mm -hmm. Not a maintenance of. So, you know, here's a case where it says camera replacement, yeah. but we know, in fact, it, right. But it's listed on the radio maintenance. Yeah, right. So maybe a different heading. Yeah, because that's the same thing as going back to this training and equipment where we're buying tasers. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a, uh, maybe yeah, right nothing we can do right now, but maybe a little change in the titles of some of these categories to better reflect I think what I it, the actual yeah, content yeah. is. It was good that you asked questions. I'm sorry, Chief. You know, very adequate. You're great, Chief. Right. I think that. It's right there. CCTV yeah. replacement, twenty-seven eighty a month. Oh, well, I, I understand that, but it's listed under radio maintenance, yeah, well, rather radio than maintenance with new equipment. equipment. Yeah, yeah. You know, just a matter of semantics, I guess. Yeah. Well, all right, okay. that's all I have to say. Thank just, you. This is my opinion. All right. I, I, I will let you get all the words in you want, Chief. Okay. <laughs> uh, sick leave wages going up seventy-two percent. You, you want to speak to that? Not if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you're going to require me to. So no, I'm not. I know uh, it was a genuine question. You don't have to. Wages, <laughs> and I just want to be sure I'm on the right, right line, Tim. It's 191? Yep. Suffix yep. 191, yep. yeah. Okay. And uh, budget for 14 was 4,462. Actual was 5,490. And now we're requesting the seven thousand six hundred and eighty. At the time we constructed it, the run rates indicated that that was the appropriate location to be at. We were overrunning it previous years, so we adjusted based on that. Keep in mind, there's been contractual raises too, so that's going to adjust that upwards. Yeah. So we felt. Oh, eleven, they spent eighty-six seventy-three. Oh, 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 twelve, they spent the almost seven. So. So. <clears throat> not really out of line. Sorry, I have to ask these questions, but with the. Uh, mislabeling, as Richard puts it, of some of these line items. I'm not exactly sure what we're talking about. Uh, sick leave wages, that's something that is like uh, a part of the benefit package of the unions. Is that, that what I'm hearing? They accrue sick time. Right. And when they utilize that, we have to pay, we still have to pay them for that time that they're out sick because it's a benefit. Right. So that's basically contractual then. Mm, yes. <coughs> it has nothing to do with how often people actually take sick well, days. I think it's not contractual to me. I think it's a, it's a, 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 the town policy, though. No. And that, that you have to the replace backfill, that person. That is the backfill number yeah. when people utilize their sick time. Okay? okay? 
Okay. So that's based on our run rates, our, our numbers we estimate based on our pre previous run rates. We'll try and make a guess and an estimate. Okay. That's what that number is reflecting. So when the chief has explained to you they accrue a certain amount, they then might utilize a portion of that. We have to backfill when someone's out sick. Right. That's what that line item is there for. The estimates, we previously budgeted lower, we adjusted this higher because we found that our actual run rates, our usage of backfill, the need to backfill was higher. Just because okay. you have sick time doesn't mean you get paid for it. So, just so I'm clear, when you mean backfill, it's like I have an officer that says I'm, I'm sick, I'm not coming in today. You call up another officer, that other officer agrees to come in, and he is what you're referring to as backfill. Yeah. And it's the cost of that backfilled officer that is wholly what this line item is about. That's correct. Mm -hmm. So, 72% <clears throat> increase still seems pretty astounding to me. Based on our use rates. What's 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 problem. driving that? I mean, are we are we having an unhealthy police officer's uh, force or? No, I just I people get us a benefit and they realize these days. But didn't they look at it that way the previous year? That's why our run rate was adjusted up. Yeah, so I'm wondering, do they have a different view of it? No. Well, the actual no, was more. It's, 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 mm. The actual was 5490. Mm. Yeah. Well, last year, you went last year. The year before. Last year, we budgeted for 4,462. Our actual went over. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You almost hit the yeah. stop. Mm. So I got that. run rates, and, and I think the other thing we're experiencing, I and I, I can't provide that with you right now, it's just haven't done the schedule over the last few years is that last year I experienced for the first time that I had every position filled full time. Okay. So there was more opportunity for people to utilize their sick time. I'm usually used to being people down, either a couple people on workman's comps, some people at the academy, and we had that beginning in December. So you actually had more man hours, essentially. Yes. Okay. That answers a good because portion they, of what they, I was looking every for. position okay. is filled. The uh, vacation wages line item up 92%. Um, you want to speak to that? Kind of a little bit of the same thing. If you see it budgeted in 14, it was 10,000. We actually it was 11,241. Uh, we're running run rates mm -hmm. higher than what we've been budgeting for, so we're trying to be more in the ballpark. We'll never be exact when people have vacation time. I appreciate time, that. Yeah. But uh, you vacation can't days is really related to the amount of uh, man hours worked, and since the man hours worked went up, that would go up as well, I assume. The number of people that are available to work, yes. Seniority on the job also affect uh, the amount of vacation time. So that will also cause it to go up as well. Okay, that explains that. Okay. And just one final observation. Uh, I would really appreciate that radio maintenance be reserved to radio maintenance. And if we're going to do cameras, that we call it something like cameras. I know that's an accounting visibility issue, not so much related to you, Chief. But I think that we have a whole bunch of accounting visibility issues that engender questions which do not need to be asked if we have these properly categorized. So with that observation, I will silence myself. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Going on. I have no questions for you, Chief. Thank you. Let's One question. I think the Chief will like this. It seems to be a town-wide policy that employees aren't paid as vacations happen. Is there a reason for that? I'm sorry. I'm They're all zero vacation day. I mean holidays. Holiday pay never shows it's, up. It's the same thing we talked about the incentives. That's paid one time a year, and that check Isn't went up. Isn't that not fair? That's just two employees. No, that's no, so many. Like it's a contract. Yeah, that's actually preferred. You got to be honest. That, that's what they negotiated in their contract. Oh, okay. So that's why you I see that. I just thought it was odd. That, that catches a lot of people because of the timing of this meeting. Because yeah. if you get your October and it looks like a bundle of money and we haven't spent the yeah. time, when you get your next actual, it's all gone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Going around. Mike, I'm all set. Are you good? Brian. Um, I just and I have my brothers. Um. I need your phone on my allowance for the um, invest, replacement vest. Um, how many did this does this cover? That's all I was asking. Ten. Ten? We have it's ten. What did we originally budget for twelve? What's the number? It's uh, 
Yeah, it's, it's 4210 4290. 490. 490. Yeah. I was just curious. That is for the new officers, correct? Right. And roughly how many officers is that? Right now we're at 10. Okay. That's all I know. Okay. Yep. Set. All right. Sunny? Sunny. I'm all set. Dave. Just a quick question. If, if we were mandated to have cameras for every policeman, what the federal government is talking yep. about. Where would that come into our budgeting process? Radio. Radio main. Radio. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> recruitment and training. The <laughs> <laughs> funny part was you said it like a chorus. You're like, you're all together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting to understand each other. <laughs> I wasn't in the chorus. <laughs> You know, for those of you who have been on this committee for <coughs> a number of years, the budget continues to be a work in progress. And if you were here 10 years ago, this is light years away from what that was. And as it goes forward with Christy, new in the position, mm -hmm. and Chief Sawyer, new in the position, I'm sure they're taking notes tonight, and we'll see some of these lines yep. change a little bit next year. Exactly, Madam Chair, and that will result in us being light years ahead in a couple of years from where there we, we are go. now. Okay, so we're ready to vote. We are ready to vote. Indeed. All right. And do you have the number? Please. 812,797. All those in favor? Yes. Yeah, so formed. Opposed. Opposed. Okay. Glenn, are you for it or against it? Yep. You're for it? Okay. So just those. What do you want? Just you those want? opposed. Opposed. Oh. Michael, Jerry, Jerry. anybody abstain? <coughs> All righty. Uh, we are on the final section. Madam Chair, on the page 65. One moment. Yes. Uh, 42106. It's got dashes all across it. Um, yeah. Special details? Yeah. I, I don't know. Should we make a motion for zero there or what? I don't know. Yeah. What the procedure is. Same page for 63. Okay. Uh, well, he's external but in any case, there. I'd like an explanation there's a little no, bit. There's no money budgeted there. There's nothing there. Right, but there was money uh, spent. There in. was budgeted. No, there was an actual spent, but there's nothing budgeted. There's an nothing actual, budgeted. No, no, no. There's an actual credit. No. 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 $90 in parentheses. $90 credit. He's right. Right. Yeah, so I just want to know what's going on with that. The $90 credit? I'm yeah, looking at that one and I'm kind of... Special details. <laughs> Actually, it's 1408. What do you mean 1408? Where are you getting that from, Jerry? I think uh, the November, October run, I think. No, mark it down. Yeah, I think the run is showing what we've done actual for the work, what's gone through the year, but what I'm looking at is the budget. What Budget sheet, page 63. Yeah, what does the yeah. 90 mean? I have no clue. Yeah. yeah. I really, I don't know. No, I don't. The only thing that happens with the details, if you see anything there, is if we do a, a, a public works work until a county credits that out appropriately, you may see some movement in there. But all of our detail stuff takes out of that detail account. So that's just right. maybe an accounting thing. Move Zero is the appropriate No money there. Right? So there's no, no money there. We're not... Voting on any money in that well, it only raises the question to me is how we pay for the special details that do occur. That's all. They're in a separate account. Right. Mm -hmm. Separate They're account being separate fund Google. For that purpose. We have a special fund for special details. Revolving fund, right. yes. And yes. money goes in and out of yes. that fund. Yes. Yes. So there should be nothing going in and out of these line items. Yes. Again, there's only the times when the county needs a place to place a charge against something. something Counting visibility thing. Okay. That's it. All right. Thank you. Station of the buildings. Okay. All right. Page 65. <laughs> 188,901. Second. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Okay. Easy section. <laughs> Police station and building, yes. regular wages, again, that CBA is 2.19%. And then custodial services, vacation coverage. Um, looking at that, we do not use an outside company for that. We utilize an internal employee who's part of the Teamsters bargaining unit. That is a 
just looking at the number, I think it was what eighty three dollars that was expended this year, actual. Eighty three, um, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a miss scoring. I know I know that's wrong simply because our custodian takes pretty much regular periods of vacation every year and we always fill it with another Teamster member that works inside the building. So I believe what we'll probably find if I track that down is that was misscored under overtime to another account. It's a communication specialist that routinely performs that work for us in the custodian's absence. So I believe that was scored inappropriately and it should be scored out of that. It may, be, it may have been scored incorrectly for 11, 12, and 13 as well. There's uh, very possible. 11 is 615 bucks, and 12 is zero, and 13 actual is 655. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you put 2,122 pop in there, it just well, it just adds to uh, your confusion. What I've been saying right along. You know. I understand your issue, but I think we can all agree. We know that's an internal employee. Eighty-three dollars doesn't cover a couple of weeks' vacation, yeah, so that's that's a miss. Does he take any vacation? Yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's. Uh, you can set your watch to, to this. <laughs> he does take vacation. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. I could even tell you where he goes, but that wouldn't be appropriate. That's a personal matter. <laughs> all right, then it must be somewhere else. Then. Yeah, he leaves Hampton for a couple of weeks to get away, and but he does it like clockwork, and so I know he takes it. That's just a missed score on okay, that one. Okay, but when he takes it, you back fill in with, with... Yeah, somebody has to, particularly the times here he takes it, getting into my busy season, so somebody's got to be there to go in and sanitize the booking room after a busy weekend and, and vacuum and dust and all that. That all has to get done, even though he's on vacation, because if he doesn't, it's going to be a mound of trash when he gets back. But we're not spending much there, though. It's been a long time. I, I don't know. No, that's my point. It's a misquote. I understand what you're saying. Somewhere that When I looked at that, that kind of caught me when I got the questions. I go, why is that? Yeah. But I look at who's the person performing the service for us. He goes away. His replacement cost doesn't seem to land. It isn't. I agree with you. It's not. It's landing somewhere else, and i got to track down where that's been happening. Move it over. You want to do it? Okay. Done. All right. Questions on this section? Starting over here, Dave. <laughs> the only note I have is uh, under new equipment. How soon will President Obama be giving you the money? <laughs> that's more of a comment than a question. So that's I'm not going to respond to a comment. You can just let it fly, but I, that's my only underlying thing. Michael? Under that very line, new equipment, what would be... What would be something that you might buy? I mean, cameras. Cameras? I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just asking. Lawn mowers, those type of things. That type of thing. Yeah. Okay, that's all I need. Thank you very much. <coughs> the uh, new equipment line item, uh, which is zero, and from what I understand, the camera discussion, which is cameras for the police station itself, right? Internally in the police station and the external environment of the police station. It would seem to me that new equipment is the presently zero, which is probably where it ought to be sure, I for the cameras. I would think the chief would appreciate your suggestions in an email to help him do that next year. Uh, <laughs> chief, would you consider that that email has been <laughs> sent? The way the man reads my mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we work together for 20 years. Yeah, whatever. There you go. That's With that observation, Madam Chairman, and yes. my certainty that my more senior and experienced members of this committee will know the appropriate action to take, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you. It's also a Disney movie with a great song. Yeah. What's up? Let it go. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I just agree with Tim hey, about moving it all up. Yeah. No, no questions. Glenn? Uh, just uh, gasoline. In general, and again, that, that's, that's one we're going to take okay. on the whole budget. Right. Oh, the, okay. fuel, the fuel issue. Right. For one adjustment everywhere there's a line. Bob? Where in this budget is there a line item for I emergency done it management? You were, I expected you we'll to. get to that right after this. Oh, okay. You get two more to do after this. All right. We do. We do. Well, fire departments in there. I know. Is it in fire chief? No. No. Separate. Separate. <coughs> Jim. All set. Thank you. Jim. All set. Okay. All right. We're ready for a vote. Want to repeat the number? Yes. Please. One hundred eighty-eight thousand nine hundred one. All those in favor? Opposed? 
And abstain. Abstain. All we have left is the final number. Okay, the total police uh, department four million one hundred two thousand six hundred and twelve. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? And abstentions. Okay. Christy, have we missed anything? Do you have animal control, I believe, in emergency management? Yes. 89, yeah, would be emergency management. Yeah. Yeah. They're not big sections. Where are they? Where are they? 89. 89 is emergency management. Under civil defense. Under new equipment? Yeah, under, under radio. Under civil defense? Yeah. Under radio. All right. Madam right. Chair, just to be clear, uh, Acting Town Manager Sullivan is still your emergency management director, so any discussions or questions, you <laughs> probably be better equipped to answer those. Uh, the whole thousand dollars. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've had some long discussions tonight over the last. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 Just watch this is an observation. Watch and see how fast this one goes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I do have a question now when we get around to it. A serious question. Okay. Whoever's going to run the show. Jim, want to make the motion? Yeah. Uh, move uh, one thousand dollars. Second. A discussion. Yes, I have a question, real quick. Where, uh, is that in a new fire station? Okay. <laughs> Again. The I'm not the emergency manager. EOC primary is in the new fire station. It's all working up to date and all that sort of thing. And with considering the fact they just finished that station up a while back. It's working. It's working. There are some issues that we deal with the controls. Yes, that's where it is. That's where we work out. Of. Great. Thank you. That's all, all right. I wanted to know. I thought it was going to be there. Thank you. And one question: Do we have backup from the Red Cross? Do we ba have backup from the Red Cross for what? <laughs> yes. yes. For expenses? Um, not entirely. We have backup if, if yeah. there's a, a need for sheltering. They're not going to turn us down. That need. Okay. As far as other expenses, no. But yeah, I, I think based on what you're asking, yes, Red Cross and the sheltering is still available to us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Just what, 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 I mean, I don't see any backup here. What, what is the thousand dollars for? That's really historically, Jerry, been in there that if we have an event and a call out, if we have that thing, we have to buy pencils, papers, food for the group that's there, that type of stuff. That's all it's been for. Miscellaneous. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I see no other questions. None of I just would like some clarification. Is the town manager now the director of emergency? I am. You are still. All right. The yeah, still. the assistant. But it's not the police chief anymore. It's I still, currently, I am still appointed as the emergency management director until that's just appointed to someone else, yes. Okay. Who made that? Lockman would make that determination of who that will be, and I, I expect that will be dealt with in the, mm -hmm. the very near future. Richie, who? Bob, you're in good hands. What? You're in good hands. I don't have one thousand following up on your question. <laughs> All right. Really, we don't need twenty questions got, on a thousand. I got one more question then, following up on yours. Now, the Red Cross would use what? When it kind of emergency shelter? Again, the Red Cross has plans. The state has plans. It depends on so many circumstances. Oh. But locally, if we had a need for a shelter, there are plans in place to utilize one of n a number of our schools for that. Okay. Thank you. That's all I was curious about. Thank you. And one quick. I mean, none of this is used for like overtime or anything like that. No. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of thousand dollars in this line? Unanimous. Yeah. Opposed? No one. Abstain. Said so unanimous. Okay. Well, I see everybody's name. ACO Health and Human Services. One twenty-one. One twenty-one. One twenty-one. The hydrants have come under call. I think 123 is a total. 123. Oh, you get them on here for tonight? Well, fire. Yeah. What is it, 120? 121, 122, I think. 123, 
Yeah. 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 That's, that's what it is. Just animal control. Yeah. 162, 162,772. No. no, 59. That includes mosquitoes. That's oh, up there. 59,772. <laughs> Second. Thank you. <laughs> 59,772. Now, these regular wages are, are CBA driven too? Yes. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 Until we're approaching the <laughs> uh, We all know one another. Yes. Everything in this is contractual, nothing we can do about it. Okay. Well, what about supplies and expenses? No, supplies and expenses got bought based on some traps and other things. He says he did. He does an amazing job, and, yeah. I walk late at night, and there's a lot of animals over there. Okay. The other one walked late at night. All right, any, any other questions or discussion? No? All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Unanimous. No, no Christmas okay. carols. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't know what you were listening to. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm not supposed to be watching porn on that in that in minutes. All right. It's not porno, that Thank was you, Chicago. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you, uh, for joining us. Uh, uh, We're going to go through these. Nobody move. Uh -huh. yeah. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> what? We're going through the minutes. We're going through the minutes. The chair yeah. says she's got something else to go over. Yeah. 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 All right, everybody, if you would gather your minutes. We don't have them all. Would you like to do first, Madam Chair? All right, take I don't have any corrections. The minutes for I believe it was eleven eighteen. Yeah, I did. Huh? I must have given them out for you. Uh, yeah, 1118. All right. Madam Chair. What minutes are you going to do? You don't have the 17th. Does everybody have the 17th, June 17th with them? I do. June 17th. Oh. Or enough to look over. Let's put it to you this way. Did anybody have any corrections to June 17th? I don't. Tim, did you? Thank you. I would like to make a motion, if I might. Make a motion? Yes. I'd like to move the, the, the following minutes for approval. June 17, October 30th, November 4th, November 12th, November 18th. In mass for approval. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second okay. that. I, I, I think we got to take one at a time just in case someone had a correction. And I'm sure if you have a correction, you've brought it with you tonight. Take one at a time. Start with June 17th. We're, we're still missing a September one. We're not missing the no, we did, uh, no, no, that. No, we did that one. No, it was October. That was October 21st. 21. That was October 21st? September yeah. 16th was approved was the approved. meeting where that Pam Blaisdell was here. Okay. Uh, yes, and uh, that, 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 that one has not been emailed, so I and cannot, I I cannot vote on that either. one. I gave everybody That's why I didn't include it in my vote. Last time. I'll get you one. All right. Let's take one at a time. If there's one we missed, we'll do it Thursday because we we're going to be here again. Right. So going back to June, June, June 17th, motion? I made a motion for okay. all of them. Second? Second. Okay. June? Any corrections? June? I'm not going to go yeah. page by page. June 17th, is there any corrections to June 17th minutes? Okay. All those in favor? Right. If you weren't here, some here. of you were not. So if you were not here and not on this you committee, then okay. abstain. Yeah, right. So all those who were here, say aye. Oh, I was. Aye. I did my aye. aye.
Well, no, that's the 21st. Hi, Jerry. I'm All right. All right. All right. <laughs> and those I'll are just go back. Those Glenn, abstain. I'm abstaining. Would be Glenn, Glenn. Would be Joe. Would be Dave. I'm abstaining because I don't have the minutes with me. All right, Mike. I don't have them. And Mike. Seventeenth of June. Yeah, seventeenth. Mm -hmm. Seventeenth of June. We had that graduation ceremony. Yeah, you yeah, were not here. I was not here. So you abstained too. I have to abstain. Okay. Look. <laughs> All right. For I'm, those of you who who were not here. here at a meeting, I can go back to the previous meeting and tell. You don't have oh, to. Good. I'll wonder if you were here or not. There we go. Okay. All right. I'm not unless voting on that one then tonight. Unless you're abstaining for another reason. We'll put. I'll put the the seventeenth back out to you for Thursday's meeting. Check your email tomorrow for them, okay? We'll move it past that one. The next one, Joe. Okay, the next one was October 21st, which I did not take the minutes. Right. Okay. Right. I have mine. You have yours. Yeah, I'm waiting for the email. Okay, you have I'm yours. Right here. I'm waiting for the email. You have yours. October 21st. Yeah, I gave right. them out at the last. I have a right I want the email. All right. Yeah. I don't have October 21st. Why don't we do this at the next meeting? Yeah, we meeting. do. We've got to get, gotta get some of these knocked out. All right. Any All right. Changes? The yeah. 21st will go yeah. out to you tomorrow, too. So Thank leave you. that one. Okay. Now, everybody, there are no excuses because Jane was, uh, Joan was back in action. And from this point on. October 30th. I yeah, I'm move. sure there's going to be changes. I second it. I can do 30. Okay. October 30th. We've yep. got it moved and seconded. Who moved? I did. He's moving on all of them. All right. Any changes on the page Jones one? Waddell team? That's it. I knew I was that, so I missed one. Page two. Page three. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> page four. Five and six. Okay, all those in favor to accept them? Okay. And I think all of you are here. No, Jones and Wood abstained because they were absent. Okay. I got it right here. Yep, that's right. Now which one are we doing? All right, so 30th is done. November 4th, move. Second. Second. <laughs> Does anyone have any correction to November 4th? No. No? All those in favor? Aye. No, David, you have to abstain. I abstain. David abstains. What are you doing on the 4th? Huh? He was electioneering. <laughs> yeah. I'm abstaining. Well, I, I wasn't, wasn't there on the 4th. Jim, Jim Waddell wasn't there either. Jim's abstaining. Mike was abstaining because he doesn't there. have him. But everyone else said yes. Three abstains. Two. Mike, David, and Jim. I don't know why Mike's abstaining. He was here. He abstained. They were there. They, the they were up. He the chose election. to okay. abstain. Okay. Fine. Jim. The abstentions were Wood, Waddell, and Pierce. The rest was in favor. November 12th, moved by me, seconded by Mr. Waddell. All in favor? All right. Well. Did anybody have anything to add to it or take away? Okay. All those in favor? All right. Abstain? Abstain. Yeah. It would be Sonny and Jim O'Rourke. Move November 18. Second. I don't have November 18. I don't have November 18. Any 18. corrections? I don't have it. It was, it was emailed. Yeah. Yeah, Didn't you get them by email? I Mike? did. I got it. And I not only that, I pet Mike. I've had I copies of that. I don't that with me. That's for sure. <coughs> I didn't know we were going to do minutes tonight because it wasn't. Email went out. We all read them. We said it for the last three, three meetings. Email. We were going to talk about yeah, exactly. There's a sufficient quorum to vote on it, so let's do it. All right. All those in favor? All right. All right. I have to abstain, Joan, because I left halfway through the meeting. That's right. Okay. That's a half to abstain. And Michael's going to abstain. <laughs> and I have to abstain. Half a hand. I don't have the minutes. I'm abstaining. Okay. Janair and who else? Abstain here? I might abstain. <laughs> I read the minutes. I, didn't have the I would highly suggest Give it a that try, those Jim. of you <laughs> sitting here who say you don't have your minutes do something about getting them. You know what you got to bring in. You'll have them from now on. I just got my printer stuff today.
<laughs> I didn't see it on the agenda, so that was my problem. Well, then you haven't been listening, Michael. I've been looking. The agenda has printed out for us, and it doesn't say anything about me. There you go. All right. And June 17th and October. Excuse me, gentlemen. Just why you miss some things. June 17th and October 21st. Look in your inbox tomorrow. Copies of those minutes will be there. Okay. October 21st. We already approved June 17th. June so 17th, you know. we did not. Yeah. No. No, no. we did not. Yeah. Okay, we did. Too many couldn't even remember who was here and not here, so we retracted the June 17th. So June 17th and October 21st will be in your box, and then we'll be all cleaned up. Thank you. Thursday night is fire department. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Not yet. All right. Place that on the agenda. Email out. Well, remember the schedule. The schedule, as I've said since I put the schedule out last March, is basically the agenda for workshop. If you need a separate piece of paper from me that says that that's what the agenda is, I'd be happy to send that to you. I think people wanted the minutes on the agenda tonight for, you know, that kind of stuff. Well, you guys should be keeping track By the way, of this stuff. We, we, All right, do I have a motion to adjourn? I have a question. I made that motion. I'll second. Do, second. We have, do we have a time when we're going to take care of the tabled motions relative to the... Uh, yes. Revenues. When, when is that going to happen? For the third time in the review. How about the rev revenues? That will be, I would prefer to have revenues um, discussed after we get the close of November because that will give us, put us a little bit closer to an actual for this year. Yeah, that's a good idea. So I'm hoping that we'll see them by next week and can, oh, oops, and can put them in there, Michael. Okay. All right, I just think that's a logical progression. No All those in favor of the uh, motion to adjourn, please? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Channel 22. Adjourn at 10 to 13.